And welcome back to the second half of Dropped Femmes, where we basically are just awesome and the boys just suck. So that's the thing. <laughs> um, we're going to talk a little bit more about what we've been playing and what we've been watching, because actually it almost kind of feels like because of the dry spell that's going on with new releases, there's some cool stuff going on. You know, mother, like necessity is the mother of invention or whatever that saying is. So, uh, Anne, would you like to start us off? Have you been seeing anything cool, anything different? I know Rocket League came out of nowhere, but like anything else for yeah. you that feels. Um, yeah, there were, I mean, there were a lot of people talking about how, the, you know, there's not anything really coming in these next couple of months. And so um, I actually had a, a long list of things that I knew that I wanted to go back and play that I never got a chance to, like Fallout. Um, and, you know, that will carry me for a very long time. So I've been playing Fallout 3 and then I'm going to play Fallout New Vegas. And yeah, Rocket League was something that I didn't even... I had seen people playing it a long time ago, and I didn't really think too much of it, I guess. I wasn't really paying attention, and then I have been playing it so much. Like, I'll just do full eight-hour streams of just Rocket League and nothing else. And I'll be like, guys, I might play Fallout 3 later. Just kidding. I'm just going to keep playing Rocket League forever. <laughs> and it's it's so good. Like, it's a really fun game, and it's super addictive. And it's, you know, it's cool to play with other broadcasters and... Um, it's a good time. So that's mostly what I've been doing. I haven't really been playing as many. Well, I actually started playing Ori in the Blind Forest, which I don't think was really that obscure. There were a lot of people who knew about I, that game, and I just I actually never haven't it. really seen that. It's oh really God, cool. The, the game oh, is beautiful. Yeah, it's and the, really the beautiful. soundtrack for it is incredible. That's an incredible yeah. soundtrack. And that was something that I was just I didn't know what to play one day, and someone suggested it, and I started playing it, and I I love it. So. Um, so there's games that I've been playing to kind of get me through the next couple months. So like, and that's kind of something I'm noticing a lot. Like I know Renee is also playing a lot of Fallout right now. I know Aaron, are you playing Fallout at all offline? No, you're going to though, right? I mean, the answer is yes. So I'll just answer for you. Yes. You're welcome. So exactly. But I'm actually noticed like everybody and their dog is playing Fallout right now. And I am totally okay with this, but yes. it feels like it feels like it's just one of those things where, yeah, we all know we've got another three and a half months ish until Fallout Four comes out, um, and I don't think anybody can wait. And I'm, you know, I, I feel it. I, I get the feeling. And I've been playing Fallout Three off stream. Actually, I've been enjoying it on my own. And I know that Renee, you're like 100%ing it right now. Yeah, right. so right now I'm playing a mod called Tale of Two Wastelands, which combines yeah. Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas into a single game. Um, and, it, and it runs Fallout 3 on the Fallout New Vegas engine. So you can go seamlessly between two games via a train that they, that they had modded into the game. So okay. my plan is to... Originally, I just wanted to play through both games just because I haven't uh, streamed those games on my channel uh, in a long time. And I actually started doing this before they even announced anything on June 2nd, like when they announced that preview trailer, which was on my birthday. Thank you, Bethesda, for the gift. Um, <laughs> and I started doing this, and then that happened, and I was like, oh, my God, this is such good timing. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm, cry I'm trying to... Uh, I'm crying. I am crying. I'm trying to 100% uh, explore both Fallout New Vegas and Fallout 3. I, I don't think I'll be able to do, like, 100% all the quests but I do want to do like a 100% exploration of both games. So right now I'm just kind of like trying to explore all the different locations, both marked and unmarked. And uh, it's been a lot of fun. A lot of people, um, it's been, it's been a, one of my most successful like games that I've played on my channel, just probably because I am such a passionate, huge Fallout fan. And a lot of people have like messaged me saying like, I can tell that you're just like, you're not just like following the hype train or whatever, which I don't mind people following the hype train at all. Um, well, you've inked yourself with Fallout, so yeah, <laughs> I've, of I've branded myself. Kind of I have, dedicated. I have branded myself. Kind of. So, come on, show it. Turn yeah. it around. Let's, let's oh. go. <laughs> let's turn it around. Yeah. That's my little vault, yeah. my little vault boy. <laughs> I um, that brief. Yeah, but yeah, I've I've been having such a great time with Fallout. It's been it's been awesome. I love that game so much. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and like one thing I think is really cool was seeing all these people like. I actually, at first, I was totally being a hipster snob. I'm not going to lie. I was totally being a freaking hipster snob. When Fallout, like, was, yay, it's coming, you know, we have four months, and everybody starts streaming. I was like, man, like, I know some people are huge fans, but other people, are, they're just playing it, not because they love it, 
but because, you know, it's just that it's, it's hyped. And, and I actually really feel bad that I thought that way because <laughs> that's a super hipster way of thinking. And I actually have really been enjoying finding a whole bunch of new streamers that are, you know, maybe they're not even partnered yet. They're really small and they're doing a 100% blind run. Those are my favorite streams yes. to go to. That's Those me. are my favorite yeah. things. Every- <laughs> I'm going to make Renee watch me do a I- blind run of Fallout and then just Dude, hear please. her. Do I've, it. Been telling, do I've, it. I've been literally telling all my friends, like, if you've never played Fallout and you're going to stream it, please message me. I will be in your freaking stream and I will be there. <laughs> And I'm like, if you need any help, I'm here. I'm I'm your 100. percent I'm like, I want to like, do everything. Guide if you have any questions, I'm gonna yeah. do everything wrong on purpose. <laughs> well, oh you God. can't. That's the thing. That's the great thing about Fallout, though. Is you can't There's play no it wrong. wrong way. Yeah. You can't do anything wrong. It's Dang. not that sort of game. Well, you what, can't. Like I had people that were saying that to me that were like what Shannon was saying, where they were like, "Oh, you're just on the hype train." And I was like, "Dude, look at my past broadcast. I started playing before they announced Fallout 4." Because <laughs> Renee was like, "I was like, I don't know. Should I play Fallout 3? Like, I've never played it before." And I don't know if I want to play it. And Renee was like, play it. Like, do it. If you like games, like Bethesda games at all. Which I love Skyrim and Morrowind and Oblivion. So she was like, just play, you know, play Fallout. And I'm really glad that I listened to you because I, I I kind of wasn't convinced at first. I played it for a couple of days and I wasn't super into it. And then the I went back to it. doesn't even start until like you finish yeah. the Wasteland Survival Guide, honestly. That's like when the game yeah. starts. Like the Wasteland Survival Guide is like a tutorial. Like, like that's your tutorial. For that. And yeah. it's to get you around the map. It's to get you map markers, basically. Pretty much. Like, yeah, yeah, so you have, have quick places to fast travel to. But my favorite thing was, like, I always, I've, I've been utilizing the Twitch feature of, like, being able to follow games. So I follow yes. Fallout 3 and I follow Modern Warfare 2. <laughs> and those are the two mm-hmm. games that I followed. And up until June 2nd, I would tune into Fallout 3 and there'd be, like, maybe, like, two or three broadcasters, like, maybe, like, five, ten viewers. Maybe occasionally there's somebody with 100 viewers. And, like, I would always tune in and, like, most of the time, it was a person who didn't speak English. It was always an international broadcaster, and I didn't yeah. understand what was going on, so I wouldn't be able to tune in. And then Fallout 4 happened, and now that Fallout 3 tab is just, like, full of people, and it's so amazing because I could just go there and browse, and there's always people being, like, first time playing. I'm like, oh, my God. It's going there, and I just lurk, and I just, like, live <laughs> vicariously through these people. Oh, I, I, God, I have amazing. to admit, I'm kind of, like... I'm I'm the bad backseat gamer in those chats though because as much as I love watching someone play it blind who has no idea what's going on as soon as they encounter dog meat I'm like you must protect this dog you must you must protect this dog yeah, and you need to save dies. constantly you're not saving yeah. you are restarting <laughs> your game I'm sorry but that's I, I will shut your channel down I, have. I played the whole game. Uh, Shannon, I, I do get really stressed power. out when I watch people play Fallout and they don't save like every like ten minutes. I'm, yeah. I get really stressed out. I'm like, you haven't saved in like it's it's. I'm like, it's been like five minutes. You haven't saved. Like, what, what are you doing? You need to save. F five. F five. Yeah. Oh, that was. Um, I remember when because it was well before. I think it was in April or May that Waffle did his first ever experience in Fallout three, and that was actually it. Got to the point where where he actually made a sub emote for F five because he was. <laughs> so I just did it in the chat. Yeah. Oh my god! Look at that. Oh, has one too. There we go. He's gonna need the crap out of that one because I know he's starting Fallout one tomorrow. Like. I tell yeah. people, like, just tell your chat to remind you every five minutes to save. It's because like, your chat will do it. People love be- being given prompts of what to do in chat. They love it. Yeah. They fucking like, love doing that. I know I love it. I love when a broadcast is like, hey, can you put this in chat? I'm like, I'm on it. I can do yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. I'll totally be there. For <laughs> you, man. Excuses I to spam. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's spam. it's like in uh, when you're playing like H1Z1 or uh, like Daisy or something, and you need your chat to remind you to eat or drink, you know, or bandage or something like that. It's it's it becomes like this very engaging sort of way of playing a game because then even though it's not necessarily backseat gaming, at least chat feels like it's the kind of backseat gaming that they can actually do without the broadcaster getting mad at them. Because right. yeah, it's the kind of backseat gaming that I appreciate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the other thing too that I really like is. I love seeing the reactions to the different broadcasters when they see something from a classic game like this for the first time ever, like encountering uh, Fox as your as one of your NPCs, or um, not knowing whether or not the Brotherhood of Steel is is good or bad or what, like how to feel about everything, and everybody has a different take on it, and that, that's something that for me is why Fallout is one of the greatest series ever made because everyone can interpret it a different way, and no one is wrong. And yeah. that's something, I think that's why even though it's a really old game, it has this sense of replayability on Twitch. And that's kind of something else I wanted to like have us talk about a bit is games during these dry spells, like 
there's nothing really new except for Rocket League that's that's out right now. Like that's, that's getting true. top ten. What's that? <laughs> so oh, that are getting top ten maybe now. There's yeah, so like many top, games top 10, oh, like yeah. you know big yeah. games, right? Yeah. And um and so it's those opportunities. Like dry spells can be seen as a bad thing because you know broadcasters kind of go crap. I don't really have anything to play right now that's gonna be a good like fallback for me. And I think that that's really, this is, this is a way of seeing it as a positive because when it, you have these dry spells, you can go through and you can explore and you can discover something that's, that you've never had an experience with before that will potentially make your channel huge. Like people are playing a lot of, um, a lot of Arma 3, like mods and stuff like that, getting into role playing and all these kinds of crazy things. And that game's been out for a few years. And I really, I can't wait to see what people bring out like over the next couple of months, because I think that the next big game that's coming out isn't until like September, which is Metal Gear Solid, I think. Yeah. I think I don't follow first. Metal Gear. I mean, unless you want to play Angry Birds too, which is out at the end of the month. Oh, you know, like I just <laughs> Angry so, Birds hype. Yeah, Metal Gear. Yeah, okay. I think it's Metal- cool because it forces people. You know, there's not everyone because like when Fallout Four comes out, that category is going to be oversaturated because everyone's yes. going to be playing it. And like Halo Five comes out in October, everyone's going to be playing that. You know, like mm-hmm. so. Overwatch. This is kind of right. Like it's going to be really cool for people to. Everyone's kind of being forced to play other things, and it's kind of spreading out everyone instead of just everybody's in one category all the time you know like sometimes when you you pull up your following list everyone's playing rocket league like every single person or like everyone is playing the same game because it just came out so this is kind of nice because like i know dan was playing like zelda and stuff you know so like it's just kind of forcing people to just spread out a little bit more which is cool i am the opposite of all of that when there are 80 no yeah i have it is it is i have probably missed out on so many fun games because as soon as a game is hype like i can't i can't like I have to wait until like months later. That's where, exactly. Like, I, yeah, no. I do the same thing. Fallout I is like can't. the only difference was because I was already playing Fallout before the hype thing, I'm, and I was like, well, I'm just gonna continue this because I was playing it anyway. So I'm literally so worried that one of my like most looking forward to games that's coming out in the next year. I'm so afraid of like everyone building the hype around it and then being like, you're only playing because for the hype. I'm like, I've played this at every PAX for the last year. Like, don't mm-hmm. tell. Like, I'm so excited about it. I'm so afraid that like just this big hype train is going to come and then like my like shutdown to hype is going to happen. That's exactly why it. I haven't played Ark yet is because there's just so I much haven't hype played around Ark it. Either. And, like, oh, I haven't Ark. played Ark. I haven't, I, like Rocket League's the only one I've played and, and that's because I was on yeah. Fucked Up Friday and they're like, hey, we're going to play Rocket League. I'm like, I don't even know what this game is, but I'm like, all right, let's go. Yeah, I've so. been playing The Forest. JP's, like, showing me playing The Forest. I've been playing that. It's been an alpha for, like, <laughs> the, the last eight months. Like, I love that game so much. Well, and it's it's great because it's an alpha, but they're constantly updating it. So every time you play, it's, like, a little bit different of an experience. So you can draw that game out for forever because there's new stuff all the time. And playing with different people is a different experience. And, like, how, doing it with two you- people is different than one. Did you play the forest? Like, uh, I think it. I think it came out. I think it actually well came out. Like Alpha came out like about a year ago. Ish. Uh, I started playing. Oh god, this is me lighting the candle on fire. Um, I uh, started playing it about <laughs> six months ago, maybe. Okay. So okay. I wasn't like one of the first people to like start playing it, but I definitely was playing it before there was like dual player. I was playing it before like when it was just single player. Um and before there were like half of the pieces of content that were in it that are now. But like I'm right. so pumped about it and I love it. So I feel like cuz the forest is one I've kind of always avoided. I I really love survival sandbox games, especially if they're multiplayer. I like being able to kind of experience all the different stuff that yeah, it ends up being the same in a lot of them, but yeah. I, I do enjoy the different like Getting to know a different world, especially with Ark. I think I logged like 280 hours in that game before I got, I finally got tired of it and I stopped playing it. But I mean, with, with the forest, I, it's never really pulled me in and I don't know exactly why that is. Maybe it's because of the, um, the trailer feeling like it was something that it kind of hasn't turned out to be that way. And I kind of get the feeling that the developers we're sort of testing the grounds as they've gone and like weren't exactly sure what direction to take it in until they got yeah. some of the initial feedback from the community. That's yeah. totally cool. But for me, I kind of wanted it to be that that paced horror sort of thing. Like um like what was the one with the the skinny, the white Slenderman? Skin man? That's Slender? It. Oh yeah. god. Oh yeah. That's the thing. So yeah. That, See, I, I think like for me, I said I tend to like stick to the same genres. Like my two games that I play the most are Minecraft and The Sims. And they're both like 
yeah, The Sims isn't like pixely and block, but it's the same kind of thing, right? Where you're like starting from nothing and you're building something up and you're creating your own world. I basically. love watching you play Sims. Kind of oh my <laughs> like one of my favorite things is watching Aaron play Sims. I don't know what it is. I've been There's playing like- this. I literally, I think I have it right over here. I've been playing The Sims since version one came out in like 1999, 2000. Like I've been playing The Sims for the I, bulk I, of I my life. Because, like, when I play Sims, I only ever build houses. I don't actually, like, do oh, any of like the actual games. So when games. you, but when you yeah. play, you, like, play the game, you, like, build up a family, and I'm like, I've never played this game like this, which is, like, yeah. how you're supposed to play it. But, but I basically see like, it as, like, like, a glorified HGTV simulator. That's all, that's all it is to me. We should do one. So, like, I, I, even with games like you get tired of, like, The Sims, like, my biggest complaint was that, like, yeah, I want to play The Sims, but I don't want to play by myself right now. I want to play The Sims, but I want to play with someone else. So we started doing The Sims challenges where, like, I will put versus another streamer, and we'll be like, okay, like, I played against, uh, like, Jordan had never really played it. So I was like, all right, the first person that can kill their Sim by not trapping them in a wall wins. And so we like That's it was the first really person. Mental. It was the first person to kill their sim. It was That's the first. That's what Sims does to people. He died by embarrassment. He peed. He peed his pants in the gym, and he died of embarrassment. And that's how he won the game. So like, and then also Orlando, playing spot the sociopath. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like, it's I don't know. I've stuck to the same kind of like creative genres, and a lot of people have recommended like, oh, go play Witcher because it's kind of like open world. You get to do what you want. And Fable Two is one of my all time favorite hands down games ever in the history of gaming of all time. So a lot of people are like, oh, go play Witcher. And I tried to play it, and I was like, ah, it's not really, this isn't, it's not the no, same, right? you just right? need to play Fallout. If you, and if that's you the other Fable, game everyone I totally need to play Fallout. And you will like Fallout because uh, that's just, that's not. I don't know if you'll hot. be able to play Look Fallout, though, because hot. Fallout has uh, <laughs> a, a lot of cussing and stuff. Unless you don't care about that on your streams. I'm not sure how, yeah. you, how you run your streams, like, as far as, like, mature content goes. Because there's a lot of gore and there's a lot of cussing and there's a yeah. lot of yeah. adult themes that happen. Yeah, but well, she liked Fable and Fable's got straight up. Yeah, like, Fable is also like, ne- is not it? necessarily family friendly. Yeah, yeah, but Fable, oh, Fable Legends is coming out and it's gonna be like the best. It's gonna be the best. When is ever. that coming out? I don't know, but it's in closed beta right now, and I just I want it so badly. You can cross-platform it. You can play on your Xbox, and I can play on my computer, and then you don't have to have the war against who's better and then arguing about what you're going to play on. Like, you can cross-platform, play the game. Very true. Like, why did it take a week to put a man on the moon, and we just figured out how to cross-platform games? I wish more games would do that, honestly. (gasps) Like, Rocket, like the cross-platform with Rocket League is awesome. I think that's such such a good idea. To be fair, Rocket League does a lot of things right in terms of multiplayer. Like their their netcode is pretty amazing. There's not really that much in terms of wait time. The matchmaking is really like, in my opinion, quite balanced and it's mm-hmm. very yeah. speedy. So, yeah, yeah. I, I'm Rocket League just kind of stuns me. It, and it the really fact that you have a F- F- you have a FOV slider on on PS4. What? What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they had like some what? problems with their servers when yes, they were getting started and stuff like that. But I feel like they've done a really good job of getting, you know, being communicative with the with the community and everything, and telling people, okay, we're you know we're working on it. And I think that they just weren't prepared for. I mean, they've got like they had something like 160 thousand people online, on you know, like at at a time. I think that was like their their max. So I just think that they weren't quite prepared for it. But overall, the game is super balanced, which is really great. You know, because you don't feel like. There's just people who are, I mean, I guess if you play like the the number one players and stuff like that, it would suck. But Mm -hmm. um, it's one of those games where you can be bad at it and it still is fun, even if you're just like messing around with your friends. That's the like well, the the reason why I can I can kind of forgive all those server issues is because the game did kind of come out of nowhere and I'm sure they weren't yeah. expecting such a huge response Definitely. from the community like this. So that's why I, I can like I can just forgive that because there's like I obviously didn't see this game coming and they obviously yeah. didn't see this like I think they I don't think they coming. realized it because they were when they when it first kind of started coming up on Twitch like a month ago. They were very, like, active and saying, like, someone, I think it was, it might have even been Max that had, like, as, like, a side been, like, oh, it would be really nice to be able to have this in the game. And, like, in the next update, it was there. And Mm -hmm. they did such a great job of listening to user feedback and then incorporating that into the game. (laughs) You're right there, bud? Um, That I think that that's part of the reason why (laughs) why it, it took off so much. Yeah. I actually feel like the arc has kind of followed the same sort of approach to its community. Um, you didn't really see it 
you know, nobody really knew it was coming until about a week before it launched. And then everyone was talking about it. Like, there's this new game. It's got dinosaurs in it. It's coming out in a week. Holy crap, right? And then we get it. And then they've just been constantly doing updates. There's, like, there's been times where we'll go about six to eight hours of gameplay and then suddenly we have to restart because there's another patch and it's got a whole bunch of new content, including new dinosaurs. It's nuts. I'm pretty sure the developers don't sleep. And I've seen the developers in everybody's chats for it. I saw a lot of work be done on it. Like, it was one of those things where as soon as you ask a question, you know, the next day you wake up and yeah, sure enough, same as Rocket League, it's there. And I almost wonder if developers like that are tapping into something that, maybe more traditional developer or like big studios might not be seeing quite yet that there's so much power in utilizing content creators as basically a tool to sell your game. And if you pay attention to them and you have that kind of mutual respect going back and forth, you can be incredibly successful with the game that you have. Like I, I can only wonder what's going to happen in five you know, even two years from now, um, just how many developers are going to be listening to their communities, including like, especially content creators. Like, it's going to be really, really interesting to see how things go. Um, and also, like, how many developers are going to be wanting to get involved at TwitchCon. That's another thing I'm really And there's panels about. about how to get developers interested in your stream and as a developer, how to get in touch with your broadcaster. So if you're I'm interested, so happy that developers are finally starting to realize <laughs> streamers. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh. For so and long, that's it was like talking about it being YouTubers so new. had that like, had that yep. special like like a specialness about them. Like everyone wanted to work with a YouTuber, but, yep. but when you said like, "Oh, my Twitch broadcaster," media. they're like, "Uh, yeah, we don't care about that. We just want YouTube <laughs> content." So now yeah, yeah. it's like we're like you're oh. like, "Oh, yeah, like we're on the same playing field now." I mean, there's still some developers that are kind of still stuck in the past, but it drives me like as a content creator. It, it does kind of, like, frustrate me. Like, even, like, some of the games that, like, the game publishers that I work up with on, like, a regular basis, it, it frustrates me where I'm like, yeah, I really want to play your content. Like, can you tell me, can I get, I'll even pay for the product. Can I just get it early? Like, yeah. I just want to play this. To showcase and they're like, it. Right, yep. they're like, but nah. And I'm like, I don't, like, it baffles me. Why? As a Why? Of how you <laughs> deny the free publicity yeah. of that. Like, right. that is such a valuable free tool for yep. you to use that like a lot of people like would say like now you have to pay me to pay to play this or to like feature this on my show or whatever and like there's so many of us that are just that into the community we just we just want to play your game man like just yep. let us play and they're like yeah but nah yeah, I get like a baffles insane. once 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 you get it out there I mean the possibilities are really like endless in terms of just how much reach your game can have, especially if someone like Lyric picks it up. Um, yeah. I've seen Lyric pick up the odd obscure title that maybe didn't ever think it was going to really get that kind of exposure. And Lyric will stream it to 40,000 people. And then all of a sudden you can see the sales on Steam for that particular title just go boom overnight. And it's also, I mean... With with a game like, for example, DayZ, like with the mod, when it came out, it was not, it was just a mod that like, I think Dean had just made like, you know, for himself with a few other people. And because of Reddit, 4chan, and then YouTube, and then Twitch, within the span of about three months, you know, that particular free mod had a accumulated one over 1 million sales for Arma 2 because that was the platform it ran on. Like, that's all free advertising that's all yeah. free and well, when, um, their their standalone also had no advertising uh budget at all it was literally just whatever the community does with it and did a playthrough of there came an echo a couple of months oh, like, yeah. was it like six months ago and it i was involved in like the music side of the game like i sang in one of the songs on their album and I watched, sat down and watched it, and there were so many people that are like, this game is so cool, I'm going to buy it. Because she's sitting yeah. there playing it, and it's a very unique experience. And the publishers were, like, in there watching her play it and, like, looking, you know, for feedback and things. And she's just playing the game, and then all of a sudden people are like, this is so cool, I'm going to buy it. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to buy it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is really awesome. And yeah. just to see how, like, into the story she got and how... It, it was a really unique experience. I think to just watching somebody play the game is also often more of a testimony to that than a trailer or an ad or anything else. 
Yeah, you what are you playing like, there, Anne? She's That's playing there, Kim and Echo. Echo. Yeah, it's, it's a really voice-activated cool. game. Yeah, so you'd be like, Corin, This is that one I was telling this, you about, Shannon. And like, they'll go and do the thing. It's awesome. Yeah. They'll say, like, Al- Alpha Sector 6, and like the Alpha Sector will go like to... Yeah, sector it's all voice-activated yeah, like, and yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's all... It's you really don't cool. have to use your keyboard. It's all voice commands. Oh, sorry. Yeah. That is... That is... Okay. There is something... And apparently the voice activation works like pretty well, too. I was surprised at how well it worked. For, like, an indie game, I was actually really surprised at how well it actually listened. There There came came an echo. There came an echo. Yeah, and Aaron sang one of the songs on it, which is pretty great, and I use it for my intro sometimes, so. Right. I always get tweets when you do it. The soundtrack was um, (laughs) Big Giant Circles. So, yeah. yeah, I get tweets every time Anne goes live and they're like, I hear you on Anne's stream. And I'm like, I'm not talking to anyone. Yeah. And it like freaks me out for a second. Yeah, but yeah. I'll do that too. Like, I'll, I mean, when, so you were mentioning how Lyric plays like random games sometimes and he does his like, sub- subscribers will like vote for what games he should play on Sundays. Yeah. yeah. And this was, well, before he actually did the voting thing, he played a game called Besiege. And that's the one where you like build, you know, these like medieval weaponry and stuff like that. And you're, you have a kind of a goal to get from A to B and it's you have to, yeah. you know, yeah, do that kind of thing. And so, I mean, I had never heard of the game, but I didn't go to like, you know, IGN or like PC game or websites and stuff like that to, to find reviews for games. Like I watch Twitch streamers to see what kind of stuff is interesting. And then you get to see their, not this like chopped up YouTube video of some parts of gameplay and some some parts of the trailer and stuff like that. You just get to see the actual game, which is really cool. And you get to see an a- honest and genuine reaction. Yeah, to that game. yeah, yeah. yeah. They're and not I like I'm being paid to say this. It's like yeah, you can yeah. you can tell when there's a sponsored uh, stream on on Twitch now, and it kind of gives you the feeling like okay, you can really decide whether or not this is genuine content, if this experience is real, if it's not rehearsed. And I think that kind of advertisement, that kind of exposure does much more for a game than any traditional media could. Uh, And I think we're starting to see a definite uh, break apart of that sort of thing being becoming the norm, uh, which makes it really exciting for me. I mean, I I personally much more prefer uh, non-traditional games media. Um, And I think, too, there's another really good game I was seeing Dan's Gaming was playing a game called Lisa, I think was what it was called. One second, let me see if I can look it up. He was playing this random, bizarre game called Lisa. Lisa the Game, which of course just makes me think of The Simpsons. <laughs> yeah, it's called Lisa, the, the painful RPG. It's, I'll put it in chat, it's really... <laughs> it's so the, the Steam description is just the miserable journey of a broken, of a broken man. man. Oh, Jeez. yeah, I saw this. Yeah. This makes me sad, and I haven't even seen it. <laughs> oh, I see post apocalyptic wasteland. I'm on board. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's all it takes. That sounds good. <laughs> That's amazing. So, yeah. See, That's and cool. I'm seeing some people in chat say uh, Lyric has played this game as well. And everybody has something they're kind of pulling from it. Like, if I'm just looking at the comments in chat, people are saying that they enjoyed the music, they, you know, it was extremely emotional. Um, And I think that that's something that kind of rings true because everyone gets to take something different out of an obscure game like this. Um, Elaheim, I I watch his casts where he's doing really out-of-the-blue games. Um, recently, today, I think it was, that he just did a game called uh, Contradiction, which oh, is yeah. actually a, a live recorded people, and then they're kind of segments, and it's a visual story that you choose to walk through, and you kind of have to play the detective and put these pieces together and unsolve them, like, uh, like uncover the mystery. Um, so he was playing that one. He also played another game just about a week ago or so called uh, Her Story, which I think a few other broadcasters have played as well. Um, and there's something really kind of neat about this new way of creating a game because it kind of, you don't necessarily have to have heavy in the in the art direction and the and the um, or like in the art design and the uh, programming because it's just a lot of video that's been chopped up to create this game, this story. And the neat thing about it is it creates a conversation between you and your community, just kind of like how Fallout did with uh, you know everybody telling you to save. Um, and I find that people like that because it allows for everyone to get involved with what the broadcaster is doing kind of like the same way that you know we'll get to the next thing too but like uh games like choice chamber 
where you actually make the decisions for your, your broadcaster. But yeah, you can see her story here. So in her story, you're actually the um, interrogator trying to piece together these really old videos. And they're all anywhere from 10 seconds to two minutes long. They're 20 years old. They're in this old clunky database in this ECR police. Type, yeah. yeah. And it's so well done. Like the, I'll be honest, it's not always the best acting, okay? Like sometimes it's it's actually very cheesy, <laughs> but uh, it's it's really neat how you can play it for as long or as little as you want, so long as you kind of have an idea of who who done it, sort of thing, and then you you can have the the ending. Now the cool thing about her story, um, and I won't I won't spoil the ending, but basically. It's up to you. Uh, that's all I'm going to say. So I, I really like that the agency is being given back to the player in games like these. And uh, I kind of wonder if we're going to start to see a lot more sleuthing games come out and have this new sort of smaller genre. I think that'd be wicked. Um, is there any other games that you guys can think of that like other people are playing right now that are really obscure and just kind of come out of nowhere? Um, I wanted to mention just this game that uh, I haven't actually had the chance to play the alpha of it yet, because, but I have access to the alpha, but I've been following it since I heard about it at PAX. Oh, God, it, it might have been PAX East. I'm not sure. All the PAXs blend together into, like, one giant PAX event, I swear to God. Um, but it's called We Happy Few. Um, it's on Kickstarter right now, and it's just, like, such an interesting... I'm, like, I'm so enthralled by, like, psychological thrillers. I'm not really a big horror fan, but I like psychological stuff. Um, and this right. is basically you are playing in a, in a like retro futuristic. It's set in like a, like a, it's, it's very much like Bioshock. Um, and everyone in the world is like on this drug fueled, cheerful, like, uh, like sort of like a, just like a delusion. Like everyone is happy and you're the only one who's not <laughs> on this drug. So you kind of have to like hide in plain sight. And that's what I like because I'm terrible at stealth games. I'm so bad at stealth games. I don't like them. I don't have the patience for them. But um, this one, you're like, you're hiding in plain sight. You have to blend in. If you do anything out of character, then the entire town will, like, turn against you. And, uh, and, and you have to, like, survive. So you have to find weapons. You have to craft things. You have to, you have to it's, just, it's just like in, like, a fall world. You have to, like, loot places and try and, and survive in this town of people who are coming after you because you're different than, from them. And it's just, like, it seems it like, like it's Gawker such a... Dead. It, yeah, it's yeah. I mean, like hiding, but you're, the bodies, yeah. only with or, less yeah. octopuses. It just has such a cool style to <laughs> it. As such, a, like, oh my god, I I am am so stoked about this game, and it's very. It has a lot of dark humor. It has a lot of um, I don't know, just that that weird so the, the like weird nineteen like, sixties retro futuristic kind of, vibe is cool. What was that? Do you like the like steampunk kind of style, like Dishonored yeah. and stuff? Yeah. I like I like a lot of I like a lot of steampunk and I like a lot of I like that the like Fallout has that retro futuristic concept to it as well like right. Fallout feels like it's set in the 1950s if the 1950s pro like prolonged like 50 more years I guess and you and we yeah. stuck with a lot of this technology um, and that's the same way this game is it's like it's set in in the, like everything is very 1960s feeling but it's as if the 60s just kept on going it's it just seems like such a cool game it's on Kickstarter right now. And you can get access to the alpha, I think, if you if you back it. Um, I'm not entirely sure on that, but it's it's it looks super cool. See, and that's that's I like that approach where games seem to have like it's just an art style preference. But I really like that this one looks a bit like. I actually think it's Tim Burton, the the director I was thinking yeah. of. I think it's like a Tim yeah. Burton mixed with Austin it, Powers. It's like if you mix if you mix like Austin Powers, Tim Burton, and Neil Ga Ga Gaiman together, like that's all those mess together like that's basically what this game is and it's it's super oh my god that looks so cool there was a game so like every now and then i'll pick up like a random indie game and just like play it for my youtube channel like i'll play like an hour of it and just like highlight these like different kind of all over indie games and there was one that i played a couple of months back called lumino city and it is the most beautiful game i have ever played it's like a like it's a it's a live action. So you know, like when like the movie Box Trolls, where it's like kind of that claymation, like Corpse Bride, Nightmare Before Christmas type look. Lumino City is the same way, and it's JP is going to show a clip of it. It's like a little paper town, and you're running. You're this little character that runs through, and you're solving puzzles. It is the most hands down beautiful game I have ever played oh my in gosh, my life. Just, just that little. Yeah. Right, little, it's like, gorgeous, and that is that oh, is actual gameplay. That is actual gameplay. That's not like a trailer. 
It actually it looks, looks so like cute. that when you play the game. And it is like this random, like many people haven't, like I haven't seen it on Twitch very much. Um, but it is a gorgeous, gorgeous game. And, and it's like, out now. Yeah, it's out now. It's been out for a while. I'm, I'm like making notes of, it, of all um, these games <laughs> because yeah, I haven't heard of any of these yeah. games. I don't watch. I, I <laughs> it's never watch. It's so anything. gorgeous. But like that's a, just a random like that's one of the, the things about Twitch I love is you can just like find like a super random game mm-hmm. and like uh-huh. see it because that hands down is the most. I didn't finish it because like I played just like an hour of it. But mm. it is the most I will say it, it's the most gorgeous game I've ever played ever. It kind of reminds me of the, the really? Tearaway game that's coming out for PS4. it kind of and i was a big fan Tear- of tearaway when i played it tearaway, um, yeah. i don't have it's, it's on the vita i think right isn't it on the playstation vita it's ps4 is september 9th and it's already out on the vita though right oh is it oh yeah it came out as like a handheld thing so i almost bought a vita oh, okay. because i wanted to play tearaway so that's kind of cool. that like little big planet type feel yeah um, it looks like if you mix little big planet and fez together just the way yeah. that you that, that one part where you like wrapped around the level yeah, this is really cute. What was that yeah, game that came it. out? Uh, it debuted at E3, and it was um, it was like a ball of yarn. Oh my god, the oh, yarn uh, thing! Why can I not remember the name of this game? Yarn demon. That guy looks crazy. <laughs> he wasn't a know. demon. It was yarn. He he's got like red horns and stuff. Man. All I can think of is like the 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 Nintendo games that all have yarn, like yeah. Yoshi's oh. yarn and Kirby uh, yarn and stuff. I can't think of anything that has yarn. I can't remember what it is. I was he thinking had, like, of a the name. one um, that was unravel. Really- Sweet. Yeah, unraveled. unraveled. Thank you, Chad. Google. No, Chad's always saying it on wrong. It. It's just unravel. No. <laughs> Chad already all, always knows what you're thinking. <laughs> See, oh my god, that reminds me. Uh, at E3, they announced that Horizon game. We could talk about Unravel first, but the Horizon one with the dinosaurs and stuff. Zero. Yeah. That one. Dark. Yeah. I haven't Dawn. seen Unravel. 30. I didn't get to see that at E3. Yeah. Yeah. See, look at him. He's got like pointy horns, man. I mean, it's very, it's adorable. He's creepy looking. It looks like if that yeah. woke me up in my sleep. I'd be like, I want to play you in like a little jar. If you oh, had a little scared. yarn man standing on your bed waking you up at night, you would be excited You'd about probably, that. I don't have you? Think I would happy. love it. I would flip out. I would burn how, my like, house down. Into Everything. sewing and quilting, I am. I'd be like, you came to life, my little baby. <laughs> and this is why Aaron would be the first to die, and that's what the world. Yes, this one was a huge fan oh, of okay. Ian covered. That's, I'm the that's one whose like body gets overtaken by the demon, and I'm like, no, guys, it's totally okay. <laughs> You're like, fine, it's fine. They're hugging me. It's just a little tight. And then they just suffocate you to death See, in their yarn. And then, Aaron, you end up in that game that Renee was talking about where everybody, or no, wait, that Anne was talking about where everybody's on drugs and you have to find your way through that town and look like you're <laughs> one of them. In oh, yeah, that's so what, no, that's what we have with you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, look yeah. at well, him. He's so cute, right. though. He is, he, is, he is kind of cute, actually. He like, looks like that hat that Lady Gaga wore that one time. Oh, that makes it better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay. She didn't just imagine this Lady Gaga under there. It makes it a lot easier. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just uh, give you guys one more quick little random under sort of uh, obscure game that uh, you should all be playing right now. There's, there's the link for JP. This is Kung Fury the Game. Not kidding. There's an actual game for Kung Fury, and it's oh, only wow. two <laughs> or something and yes I'm totally wearing the Kung Fury shirt because I friggin love Kung Fury so (laughs) in Kung Fury there are only two controls you can go left and you can go right and those are your attacks and that's it and it's actually pretty challenging to get like a because you can't move without breaking your uh, your combo so you have to make sure that every time you move, you're actually making an attack. And so by doing that, you can get a huge amount of combos, and then you know you can get up into the hundreds of thousands of points. And it's really addicting, even though it's super uh, simplistic. And obviously, it has the Kung Fury soundtrack. It's really cheap, so it's kind it's of one of those things. dollars, like you. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm buying it. It's one of those right games now. where you know, <laughs> it's totally worth the money because you're probably going to spend like an hour playing it, and that was yeah. a hour so i want to play it solely because the shirt you're wearing is super cool well yeah i uh i actually got the game idea from blah from blacklight attack because he was he was addicted to it and so he challenged me to try to beat his high score which i I have failed yeah he's already talking he's talking about it in chat chat. i i did not (laughs) that guy at all i suck but it's fun one of the things that like I'm like super pumped about that hasn't come out yet and it's not two dollars but it is the most <laughs> awesome thing ever is um, the hollow lens. So I've actually gotten to do 
two HoloLens demos. I got to do the Halo one and I got to do the Minecraft one. And if you guys didn't get to see the HoloLens demo that Lydia did uh, at E3, it is exactly like that. Like they put me in a room and they gave me the HoloLens and they were like, all right, now do everything that Lydia did in the demo. And it works just like that. Like it wow. is the most like incredible experience I've ever had in my life like there's nothing everything that you've seen in a futuristic movie where they're like wearing a goggle and it like highlights their enemy and it scans them and tells them like this is what you're doing and then it gives you advice and then you use your voice and it does the thing that's what the hollow lens does like seamlessly it is the craziest thing I have ever experienced okay. in my life I have a question about the hollow lens yeah I, I don't get car sick I don't get seasick I don't get any form of motion sickness however yeah. when I tried the um, the oculus rift for the first ever time totally it was the different v one not the v2 and I was so nauseous that mm -hmm. I had a I had to host a panel that day this is Pax yeah. Brown last year and I got so nauseous that I actually couldn't get through it without taking a bunch of gravel. So, so I was the same way. Be one of those things. No, because when okay. I tried the HoloLens or when I tried the Oculus Rift, I tried the V2 also and I did a demo of it when it was like one of the ones where you're like walking, like you're holding, right. like I wasn't in like the thing where you walk, like I was just walking with my controller and like looking down and I like lost my balance like three times. They ha actually were like, you're just going to have to sit down because we're afraid <laughs> you're going to fall over. But the HoloLens uses your actual environment. So there's no depth perception problem because right. like if I'm looking at my wall, it puts a TV on my wall and then I look down at the table and I say, put this on the table. And when I walk around the table, you walk around it. When I look down, it, it is the room. Like it's literally just like you were seeing it without the lens on. So there's no like depth perception. There's no like wobbly knees. There's no nothing that, that goes wrong with it. It's your It's augmented your room. reality. It's, it's not augmented reality. reality. Right. It's not like they're replacing your reality. They're just adding things they're to it. They're just overlaying. Yeah, yeah. They're just overlaying it with games. That's right. really cool. So the only thing that, like, I, I'm curious to see, because, like, when I was playing Minecraft with it, you were, like, actually playing Minecraft. And so you were playing the game. When we did the HoloLens demo for Halo, they did the, the demo that they gave you was just, like, oh, look at this table, and the chief is going to, like, show you who you're going to be up against, and we're going to show you specs of the ships. But you weren't, like holding the controller playing the game. So like mm -hmm. I'd be interested to see what the gameplay is going to be like on an actual game versus just like the cool like look at your table and now we're going to It was like the Leia came on and she was like you're my only hope Obi-Wan like it was that. But I want to see if I'm playing the game. Like I want to take it outside and go running and like see virtual reality zombies coming at me so I run faster and go the other way. Yep. Like that's, that's what I, what I see. want. Yeah. Yep. But um so it was, Developers, it was if you're listening, awesome. make that. That'll, that'll go over real well. Yeah. Oh, my God. It was, you, the, it was amazing. It was so cool. Do you think that it's going to be possible to use it in conjunction with a stream at all? Or does it seem like one of those things that, yeah, it's a cool toy and we can totally use it when we're not streaming, but is it going to have an application to Twitch at all, do you think? See, I don't know because I know when they did the E3 demo – they had to have a special camera like outfitted to see it. Right. It would be awesome if they had what like the Oculus Rift has where it like automatically formats it so people can see what yes. you see. So yeah. it would be great if there were some kind of built in to that. I have no idea if they have plans for it to happen like that or what. I but hope so. I don't know. I just know that I if they were if, if it came out tomorrow I would pay like the whatever was six hundred, eight hundred dollars is gonna be to <laughs> do that again because it was it was the – like, it, when you're in the Minecraft, when you're looking around, it actually scans the room, and it puts blocks, like, on the ceiling as, like, your, like, weight screen, like, your screensaver, and mm -hmm. it outlines – like, I was looking at a guy. It covered him in blocks, and it wasn't a square. It was, like, shaped to his body. It was insane. It was the craziest thing I've ever seen. It was That's amazing. Nuts. It was I nice. think – Somebody in chat just touched on this too, and it's so true. I know it's been said before, but it's worth saying again. Basically, the success of something like this in the gaming industry is going to rely entirely on the porn industry making it awesome first. So <laughs> basically, we just need people to find a way to make this HoloLens work well for streaming in the porn industry, and then we can just port it and take all of their hard work. And I think that would be perfect. so awkward, like watching, you're like, you're little literally just standing over like two people having sex. Like that would be so awkward. Like you're just standing there looking at us. That's weird. This whole conversation makes sense. 
<laughs> Literal face palm. Like I can't. I was playing with a streamer the other day, and he busted out with one of those. Like, do you know how you like those, those cringe words? He like busted out with one in the hole for like five minutes. I like couldn't. I just. Couldn't. <laughs> I was like, my face turned red. I was like, tears were running down my face. I was like, I can't. I right think now, it's getting a little red right now. It's I'm yeah, I'm thinking about what <laughs> happened. It's all <laughs> just reliving it. Is a yeah, in my now. mind. Yeah. Um. Uh, so. So yeah, that's okay. Let's let's start talking a little bit more again then about what we're expect or like what we're excited about that's coming out in the next I don't know month to four months because I'm not sure if we're gonna get another chance to like take over JP's show. So I know obviously <laughs> this is our last Fallout time. Four is the greatest thing ever, and it's not even out yet, and it's already <sighs> it's going to basically be the best game ever released. Yes, you ever. get to make your own. You get to make I wasn't your own shelters. like okay. So I'm new to Fallout. Like I know you guys are like the ultimate fangirls. Like you guys love Fallout and stuff. So I'm kind of new to the series since I, I mean I haven't played New Vegas yet even. Uh, and I told my like my stream when I was playing it that I wasn't super hyped about Fallout. They announced it and I was like they announced Fallout Four and I was like okay like cool Fallout Four whatever you know. <laughs> Like, like and then that. I went to the actual E3 Bethesda <laughs> it's conference, like so much stuck at, like, and like phone. being like, at the like Bethesda conference and like having everything be announced, you know, like with all the weapon modifications and the armor modifications and like destroying the environment and like building your own towns. And then they were like, and there's the gonna be like raiders, raiders getting like, into the power all this stuff. <laughs> yeah, and it was just like I I told my chat I was like I was not on the hype train and now I have murdered the conductor and taken over the hype train. I'm Good. so excited about that game <laughs> that like. I had no idea that it was going to be so awesome, and they just kept making it. The announcements just kept coming that were just, like, more and more awesome. It was really cool. Now, I will say this, and this is probably going to make everyone wonder where Shannon went and who is this person who's in her, her body. I did definitely <laughs> buy the iPad just for Fallout Shelter. <laughs> now, here's the part that is the surprising bit. I only played it for about a week and a half, and then I just stopped. And I've not really gone back to my shelter. And I kind of capped off after unlocking all the different, like, buildings, that, like, like, the rooms that you can build. And I find that the reason why I didn't enjoy it as much as I wanted to in the long term was because there was no end game. Like, I understand it's an Apple game. It's, it's a mobile game. It's not meant to be incredibly in-depth. It's not meant to have an insane story and be incredibly replayable for hundreds of hours, but I did kind of hope for just that extra little bit to keep you intertwined with it uh, near the end when you've already kind of accomplished everything. Um, I'm hoping they, like, add more stuff to it, like more rooms, yeah. more, like, uh, different, like, special, like, more events that can happen, and, like, I'm just hoping they add more to it. Because I'm the same yeah. way. I, I mean, I played it for a little bit longer than a week uh, just because I didn't, get, I didn't get, I didn't unlock all my buildings that fast because you're way better at the game than I am, apparently. Mm -hmm. Um, it took me a little, little bit, but yeah, I haven't, I haven't picked it up in a couple of weeks now because I did finally unlock all the buildings and then it just became like too hard to manage. So I had to stop tuning in to like fix things. So yeah, that's yeah, in the same way. I found that I kind of made my own end game, which was, I wanted to get three dog as a person in my vault. And the only way you can really do that is by unlocking the card packs. And I didn't want to continue to buy the card packs. So I just did the challenges to get free card packs. And that was kind of something that kept me going for an extra few days. And then I just sort of trailed off because I lost interest. So I'm really hoping that, um, they kind of keep updating it and put something new into it because I don't want to just have it die off. I think it would be really cool if I could do more with it. Yeah. I'm just not seeing that happen right now. Maybe it's because there's like I know that they did a big update to it last week and they added some new functionality and some cool new things, but I still feel like that end game is what's lacking. And I think that uh, when we see it launch on Android, hopefully all of the efforts that they're putting into it can then switch gears to something else. Oh, yeah. actually. Sorry, JP. Oh, right. So the other <laughs> cool thing is that it, yeah, it did uh, $5.1 million in the first two weeks. So insane. And that's just for like a little mobile game that had absolutely no advertisement before its launch. That's nuts. Like That was like so when crazy. Beyonce dropped her album like overnight and everyone was like, yeah. hey, what? New Beyonce yeah, album? Yeah. yeah, and then they were just like, hey, mobile app, and we're going to release it right now. I feel the same way about this that I felt about the I yeah, know this even existed. <laughs> I, I named everyone in my. I named. I, I had a character named Todd Howard. I had 
Todd Howard, and he was worked at my radio station. And then I made Todd Howard have sex <laughs> with every woman in the vault. And then all, all of their kids were named Todd Howard as well. So my They're entire nice. vault is just filled with people <laughs> named Todd Howard or Todd Lee Howard or Todderson Todd Howard. Lee. <laughs> like just let, variations of Todd probably, and then um, Howard. Note to self: Never let Renee manage my Fallout community. I'm a terrible. Happens. I mean, I also made it a rule so only women can have guns in my vault. So the only <laughs> characters who have guns are the women in the vault. None of the men have guns, and it's worked great. It's been perfect. See, that doesn't work because the women are the ones in my vault. Every woman is always pregnant, so they can't have a gun. I never have. have a I have certain people cool, I mean, your vaults. I what mean, I, I'm, I put myself in my own vault and I put a couple of my other friends in my vault and like me and my, and my, my friends are never impregnated. All the other women get pregnant, but. <laughs> Tyler uh, says this sounds like a really strange and sexual fan thing. <laughs> uh, you do not it's kind of weird. know what kind of fan you can't, I don't think you can make a uh, brother and si- brothers and sisters like get together though. I think it yeah. won't allow you to put them in the same, it went, they'll go in the same room. Or... Well, no, I accidentally did it because I just dragged some random person. I was like, oh, wait, you both have the last name Howard. Oh, God, I, I messed this up. Let's get you up here. Todd Lannister and Todd Lee Lannister in the same room. Yeah, you just need to have, like, a good naming convention, and then you won't, you won't encounter the confusion. But, like, yeah, so all of my women are pregnant in my vault at all times, and every time there's an issue, like, rad roaches coming in or raiders, the women run, right? They run to the, the, the bedrooms. The pregnant women, yeah. Yeah, so if they're not pregnant, they'll totally you know, pew pew everything. But if they are pregnant, then they just run and hide. Uh, and so maybe that's why that, you, 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 you grew your, your population way faster than I did. I only ever had like maybe like two or three women who were pregnant in my vault. Oh, I, time. Had, and I are just am- staring at like absolute like we never want to be in either <laughs> one of your vaults. <laughs> None of like my the women Making like most of the women right in my now. vault were just like nor like they did they weren't pregnant. Like my like the strongest character I had was actually a woman. It was a uh, Paladin Cross was in yeah. my vault, and I put her in yeah. the entrance with a fat man, and she would just destroy any raiders that came in. She would just nuke them. It was awesome. It's so good. <laughs> I never actually played it, so that's why I'm kind of staring with a blank expression, because I did. I almost did what Shannon did, and then I restrained myself. I was like, I'll just wait for the Android version, and then I'll play it, because I'm not really big into mobile games, so I figured, you know, I'll probably do the same thing when I'll only play it for a little while. But I, I, I would say that I regret buying it because I've never been a huge Apple fan, but I have to say I don't regret it. Like, I've actually found other uses for it. So Chris and I have we started... We used it while we were together. Yeah. And the other thing, too, was that... Like, so, yeah, it helps just to have in my purse if I actually leave the house, which happens suddenly somehow <laughs> lately. Um, Wait, you go outside? Dude, yes. Right? Okay. R.I.P. Shannon. I know. These are her I'm last days. She started going outdoors. <laughs> you know they have they have like they have like uh you can like import your like D and D like character sheets like they have apps for that on the iPad. My my friend Sean uses his iPad Mini during our Pathfinder sessions, and that's the whole reason why I was thinking about buying an iPad was so I can import my character sheet onto my onto oh. an iPad, and not have like an actual sheet. God. I could have it all on that place, and they all they also have like rule books they have a ton of like D stuff so there's another use for you to use okay if i, I can get rule right 20 now. the rule 20 app if i can get that on my ipad there's a there's a whole other plethora of uses i'll get out of it the other thing too is that i found that i watch i, I was never a, a mobile twitch user because if i'm not if i'm awake i'm sitting in my chair at my desk so i have no <laughs> use for mobile apps. if i am conscious i am but, at my computer <laughs> that's right? real yeah. shannon show them she has her mirror her hair straightener and her makeup at her desk that is a real story <laughs> She oh does her makeup what? at her desk and her hair. I was like, yep. why, is your, why is your hair straightener plugged in here? She was like, oh, I get ready at my desk. Yep. Nice. I do. Cool. I also have a pedal bike underneath my desk so I can get exercise while not leaving my desk. I that's am actually a really good idea. I mean, that's like she not bad. Yeah, one. like sitting for long periods of time is I wanna, not where, great. Where is it? I want one. On Amazon. I have yeah, one. Wait. Look. Here, look. I want it to me. Look, look, look. Can I just stop is it, is it noisy? Right now? It is. Oh my is god, that's cool! Noisy. Oh my god, can you send, I want to link to that. Oh my god, it's not even noisy. No, I need to be Dude. partnered with the people who make this because I have now sold four of these things to other streamers. I've yeah. sold one to Domo. I've sold one to Aaron. I've sold one to who was the other person I got on it? Oh, there was look, somebody else who got on it. Right now, while we're talking, yeah. and you'll yeah. even know it's brilliant. And oh you know, and this is this. such a good idea. Amazon right now. This is something streamers don't do. We don't take care of ourselves. We do not stay healthy. We no. do not eat healthy. We not at don't all. 
cook unless you're JP, then you make a lot of eggs. Like we order in, (laughs) we don't go out. This is what we do. This is our lives. So if there's a way to make that more convenient, I'm all for it. So is this one called drive medical? Is that what it is? I'm literally pedaling. I've been pedaling. Or desk cycle. I don't know. There's so many of them on Amazon. People like going through physical therapy and we're like, I play a lot of video games. I really need that. (laughs) I went, to, That's great. I went to a personal trainer oh, this hell morning. Oh, like, wish. Yeah, these that are awesome. Yeah. I went that to a, a personal trainer this morning, and he was like, so what's your, you know, experience with exercising? And I was like, I'm really good with <laughs> mouse and keyboard. <laughs> and I almost passed out. <laughs> I was like, I'm so sorry. Oh, my yeah, goodness. Yeah, the doctors are like, how much exercise do you get per day? 30 minutes? An hour? Like, I walked outdoors for like yeah. five seconds and, and then it was walk, hot and I went back inside. So. There was, there was a bug and then I ran <laughs> and I went back. Yeah, I went out to get the mail. So that's <laughs> yeah. much all I did. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. This is Eating great though. Bodies. This pedal, pedal bike thing is awesome. What is, who makes it? I need to know which one. Uh, so oh, desk one cycle is, is the one that I bought. Uh, oh, that's, uh, okay. Mine was yeah. like $24. And it was on Amazon yeah. Prime, so I got it for two day shipping. Yeah, the number one nice. bestseller is the one that's from Drive Medical. It's like a hundred bucks, medical. isn't it? It's for yeah. like physical therapy and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it's the, for the people who are well, like, now that we have <laughs> sold desk cycles to everyone. <laughs> so much free promo during this drop frames. JP is like, yeah. take it, you guys. Sponsored totally. by desk cycles. Actually, yeah, we're full it's on like, like your this desk is a, today. Yeah, we're addicted to to things that we get total promotion for. So yeah. No. Um. So the other thing too is with Fallout. Um. There was actually somebody in chat who asked a really good question. I kind of want to know what like um how everybody feels about this in terms of both being a veteran and also being new to Fallout. Um. Are like are we concerned about the dialogue changes in Fallout Four? Because Fallout, the all the previous Fallouts have sort of given you a few different options, and um, right now they're saying that Fallout Four will not show us the full answer for each dialogue option. So what they're doing is they're going with this new experimental way of handling dialogue, where you'll be, you know, asked a, a question, and you're only going to get point form, a couple of words of your different dialogue options and you kind of have to I guess predict what it's going to look like and that's kind of how how like that's how they did it in Mass Effect too that's how it works in Mass Effect is like in Mass Effect like you're asked a question and and like you have you have clear answers of like which one's a paragon and which one's a renegade answer but you don't get to see like the full dialogue piece it's just like there's just a a, a segment point like that they the 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 paragon one would be something about um, Krogans, and then you'd go into a spiel about Krogan. So you would you would base it basically like on like I know this is the Paragon, and then which one is the Renegade, but you never knew what exactly the full answer mm-hmm. was. So I think that's a really good approach, um, and I like that only because it's going to have more surprises in the dialogue. Because I I don't know I'm super excited about the the voiced um, your voiced main character because Fallout has some of the most entertaining and incredible dialogue <laughs> in any game I've, I've played. So some of the things that you that you say in Fallout 3 and New Vegas that aren't voiced, which have the potential to be voiced, is amazing. They, they say some outrageous crap in that game. As they long do. as Moira's not in it, I'm happy. Whoa! What? Whoa! what? Whoa. Moira's Whoa. awful. <gasps> She's annoying. Back it up, Ann. Slowly oh God. back it up. Did I upset you? Okay, oh, she, Moira she walk is my. In there and she's just like, oh, don't mind this mail. <laughs> and I'm just like, shut up, shut up. You're so annoying. She's so. <laughs> We're not friends uh, anymore. It's fine. We'll Renee, fight over I don't it. Know what just happened. Happened. Uh, right, right now. She's too cheerful. You live in a literal radioactive pit in the ground, and she's super cheerful. She's like, well, ridiculous. sorry for letting <laughs> Moira have some happiness in the wasteland. Gosh, <laughs> she's too happy. I don't trust her. That's some cast she's, for she's me. She's too happy. She's too happy. I don't trust her. It's it's unrealistic. What happiness. do you not trust Aaron either? <gasps> no, her happiness Aaron's is always happy. Okay, okay. Her happiness is realistic. Moira's that. happiness is unrealistic. Help. Aaron is always happy. I do not trust her either. <laughs> JP just took <laughs> Anne off the screen. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. You know, whatever. <laughs> And <laughs> realism right now. Oh, oh, can't, you guys, if you can't handle the truth, okay, look. Get, get out, out of the kitchen. We're gonna whatever. fight it. We're gonna fight it. Twitch out of the way. We're gonna fight in that ball pit. I will. At I'll just. I'm just sending you a video of me setting fire to the Bethesda toys that I have hung on to you for. Wait, <gasps> hung on to for you. <laughs> See, right now I would actually 
like to change the subject. Um, so, yeah. Uh, 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 games. games. Yeah. <laughs> Over Overwatch and, is also you know, coming out in November, and that's another game. I'm actually really curious to see this because, unfortunately, I think everybody's going to be on the Fallout 4. Well, that's not unfortunately, but I think everybody's going to be on the Fallout 4 hype train. So I'm really wondering how the two are going to handle, like, basically vying for top spot because I think it's basically going to be saturation for both. And I'm wondering, I'm curious, who out of all the top broadcasters are going to be picking something like Overwatch versus Fallout 4? And that's going to be a big decision for a lot of people, especially those who do variety gaming and uh, especially those who are looking for something that they can play beyond just the first few weeks until they've basically finished Fallout 4. So what are you thinking, Renee? I know you're going to be playing Fallout 4. Um, I mean, I'll de I'm not worried because I'll definitely be playing Overwatch for Fucked Up Friday every Friday. So I'll I like that. I use Fucked Up Friday as my excuse as my time to play multiplayer games, which is great for me. Like I get to have that blend. And I do want to start incorporating uh, special days in which I play other games that aren't Fallout because right now it's just like all Fallout all the time, which is great. Like I love it. I just want to. I'm a variety caster, so I have to show that I'm actually a variety caster, and I don't want to end up pigeonholing myself. So. Um, I'm really excited for both games. Like, uh, obviously, I'm a little bit more excited for Fallout 4, but I think Overwatch is going to be great, and uh, I, I plan on trying to manage my time in some way so I can get a good grasp of both. The problem you for got, me... You got to try it, right, Anne, at, e at PAX East? Yeah, that's what I was just going to say. Um, I played it... Well, I played it at E3. I got into the um, demo for it. So the problem for me is that Fallout 4 comes out like a week before um, Battlefront comes out. And then Tomb Raider comes out the same day as Fallout, which I'm sure like they were just like, what? Why would you do this to us? Um, I'm but I'm sure I'll play... Like... Oh, what? Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I was just to say, like, Tomb Raider I'll probably play like later, you know, because I'm going to play Fallout 4. And then Battlefront just comes out like right away. So it's going to be a hard time trying to like split between both of them. But yeah, I played it at E3, and it's, it's really fun. It lives up to the hype for me anyway. I'm really excited about it. Tomb Raider, to be honest with you, the preview that they showed at PAX... Um, East? No, at E3. I like. I love the Tomb Raider franchise, and I liked the last Tomb Raider. So, like, I will play the the new one, mm -hmm. and it looks good because I liked the last Tomb Raider. But it doesn't seem like there is that much of a difference in the two. Ver like, it doesn't yeah. seem like there's anything that's there's nothing about the new Tomb Raider that's so different that I'm like I have to have this experience right now because it's completely different than what I've already I had. Yeah, I mean it looks yeah. great. It's just not anything that like yeah. I'm gonna immediately have to jump on board and play it the day that it comes out. Right, like Fallout Four, you're gonna want to play like right away. You know, like you're gonna be no. like everyone's gonna. Well, not you, not you maybe, but like you know, that's one of the games for me that I'm just like okay, I want to play this like the day that it yeah. comes out. I'm excited yeah. for, for Tomb Raider and like, too. like the Battlefront will be awesome. Yeah. Uh, That'll be really Actually, fun to play. And, I mean, you guys might even want to do that for your Friday streams or whatever because it's multiplayer. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. That's, like, Overwatch and, and Battlefront. I'll be able to get my, my, my taste of those for my effective Friday stream, so. Yeah. I'm that's stoked. actually something. Um, but Aaron, this is the second time you said that like you don't want to play the the hype game. Is like, what's your? I, I've heard a lot of different reasonings for why people don't ever want to play that the second it comes out. But for you, like, what is the what's the reasoning for you? So for me, I think a lot of it is that like I I don't tend to just like I play games that look genuinely interesting to me and I want to like hear people's honest opinions and it always seems like when a game is really hyped at first it doesn't matter even if the game truly sucks everyone will be like oh my god I'm so excited about this game because everybody's playing it and there's so much right. hype that you can't get like an actual determination on whether the game is good or not good right like I'm sure Fallout will be amazing, but you guys haven't even played the game and you're already saying it's the best game that's ever existed. <laughs> so okay. like for me, it's hard to tell, is it actually going to be a good game? Because you're, you in your mind are already set that this is going to be the best game that ever existed. And if it comes out and it's absolute crap, like I won't know that until I've already spent like my $60 and played it <laughs> and spent hours playing it to be like, this is the worst game I've ever played, right? And so it could be it could be great. Listen, I'm just using that as an example because that is how every game is that is hyped ever. This is That's the best game ever. Yeah, and I Arkham like you Knight, see yeah. it. 
Yeah, like, I watched JP play it, and he was, like, playing, and he was, like, this game is so laggy, and the frame rate is so terrible, but, like, everybody was so hyped about it, and his play experience was crap. Like, yep. it's hard mm -hmm. to tell that a game is good until people have played it for, like, a month or two, and then they've had time to, like, calm the F down, and then actually make a good opinion on whether or not the game is worth it or not. Yeah, And see, yeah, that's what this is with why, me, this is Batman. the, I think, yeah, and I think that that's something that's, like, this is probably the, 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 the responsible mom in you that's coming through and just being level-headed about <laughs> everything. Because I'll, I'll be honest, like that even happened to me with Fallout Shelter, right? I freaked out yeah. that this new thing that was Fallout-related was coming and I dropped a fortune and I played it and then I realized afterwards that it wasn't everything to me. It wasn't yeah. everything I wanted it to be. So I think you're totally, totally right in that. Another example, I think... I watched JP play um, The Order, mm. 18 whatever yeah. 18, years, 18, 18, 18, yeah. those things, yeah. So I watched him play that, and it's actually been one of my favorite moments on Twitch ever. Um, there's a, it was so overrated. It was really, it was a cool concept, I think, that the some of the... Um, the storyline bits were, were, you know, interesting, but overall it felt very overrated. It felt like it was meant to be this huge epic thing. It was actually not all that long of a game. Um, and it had a lot of issues in, in playing too. Like, uh, I remember halfway through the game, exactly the, 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 what the fuck face <laughs> that everybody's spending in chat right now came from the order and he was playing it. And then he comes across this really intense epic moment where you know, the guy has just knocked somebody else out and is grilling him. He's down on the ground and it's very intense. It's very emotional. And even JP's kind of feeling it. And then all of a sudden the game just kind of goes, sorry, you need to wait another 45 minutes to play the rest of this fucking game. Oh, right. I remember like, I've seen that highlight. This needs to that. download. <laughs> and he was just like, what? Yeah. <laughs> like, it was... I mean, it's, it really was a moment that shows that games can be way more cracked up to be something that they yeah. aren't actually in real life when you get the chance to get down to brass tacks and play them. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, oh, don't, don't get me wrong. Like I am, I'm, I'm right there with you, Aaron. Like I'm usually the first one to like, when there's hype, I'm like, not, nah, not interested, like not interested. Like this is honestly the yeah. first time in, I can't even remember the last time I was so excited for a game. Like, to yeah. be honest with you, like, in, in, since Fallout 3 came out, what, six years ago? Se seven years seven years ago? I, I don't know. It's uh, been a long time. And I don't think I've been so hyper a game since, like, Modern Warfare 2, when I, which was, was, like, I was 18 when that game came out. I, I don't know. Like, I can't help, I can't help it. I just can't. Yeah. Like, yeah, usually I'm right there with you. I'm usually that, like, like, I'm usually like, eh, I don't feel, I don't know, I'll wait till it comes out, maybe give it a couple of weeks for, like, to get them sort sort through the issues and then I'll play it but this is just like my game and I haven't had my game in a long time I'm a very 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 long time I think that's kind of what rings true to fandoms and it's hard to tell who's a part of like a fandom that they're just like for me I like I saw people in the chat when I was talking about Fable Legends they were like Fable Legends is gonna be crap like I don't care because I've played it and it looks amazing and I will buy it the day that it comes out yeah. and I will ask all my friends to play it and like so I will be hype about that game because I'm a fan of that franchise so mm -hmm. like I think it's just hard to distinguish when a game is so hyped who's a fan because that's just like I've been playing The Sims since I became like a gamer, right? Like that was the game that like that was your led game. me into this and I will always be faithful. I will buy every expansion pack, whether it sucks or not. Like I will always be there for the Sims. And so when there's hype, right. it's hard to just tell like who's bought into the franchise and who's bought into the hype. And so you can't determine that until the game's been out for a while and then you get like the true, like, and I'm guilty of having my own hype for games. All the, like, I am hype all the yeah. time. Yeah, well, I for, think like, we're all only this. human. I mean, that's that's right. going to happen. I mean, but, you know, kind of coming back to something we talked about a little bit earlier where we were saying, oh, streamers are, or content creators in general, both on YouTube yeah. and on Twitch, are, uh, you know, authentic, raw, and honest forms right. of, of advertisement for your game because people can relate to it and they can see the experience happen live and they can trust it. Maybe yeah. not. Maybe that's something that plays into it. That 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 human trigger of just no. Sometimes we're just too excited for our own good that our emotions right. take over, and it becomes dishonest. Not intentionally so, but like 
right. something that we can't necessarily detach ourselves from. And so yeah. we push this huge game si simply because we're so excited for it when it's right. not actually that good. I will right. be honest, maybe Fallout 4 could actually be a huge disappointment. It fucking won't. It'll be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm personally fully self-aware of my own bias. So, like, when I'm playing my Fallout streams, I have a lot of people coming in who have never played the games. They're like, hey, like, should I buy this game? What, what what do you think? And I'm like, and I'm I'm always like, like, listen, I have I have a vault boy on my arm. Like I am a fan. I am biased. I'm going to tell right. you to buy this game. However, I would recommend and like, I don't know if this seems like pretend or like shitty or like douchey, but I'm I'm usually just like I'm playing the game. Stick around for an hour, maybe like tune in for the next couple of days, see if you like the game, and then, but then buy it if you want to. But like I'm I I feel responsible like for my viewers like when I'm pushing a game. Even yeah. if it's a game I like, I'm like, I'm always saying like, don't take my word for it. Look at it yourself. Do your own research. Figure out if it's a, this is the game you're going to want to and then then buy it. Don't just buy it because I'm telling you to get it because you like me. And don't ever buy right. a game just because somebody you like is playing it. You should always, um, you should always like focus on, on your own opinion of a game. Like I, that's just like, I don't know. Yeah, Even for Fallout, I, I, I don't want a bunch of people to buy a game that I don't think they're going to be interested in. I want well, people to what... have. Have a good time. You know, if you're excited about Fallout 4 and you are like on the hype train, whether you've been a fan for a year or since you know Fallout 3 came out, or you know played all the even the older Fallout games, you know, it, I don't think that that really matters. But I think that it's just you have to decide what you want to spend your money on. And mm -hmm. if you want to spend your money on Fallout 4 and get it the second that it comes out, or if you've already pre-ordered it and you've, you're you're getting the Pip Boy and all that stuff, like that's your money. You spend it however you, you want. Um, I do think that there is value in being cautious. If you're not sure if a game is going to be good or not, and you're not sure if you want to spend your money on it right away, that's, you know, just wait and, and get it whenever you feel like it. Like with Tomb Raider, I'm just going to wait and, and get it when I'm ready to play it. But with Batman, you know, I didn't get it when it first came out. There was a lot of hype around that game when, um, Arkham Knight, sorry. So there was a lot of hype and... I wasn't sure if it was going to play well, and then it didn't play well, and it was yeah. really, really bad. And I asked on Twitter, I was, you know, who's played this? What are your experiences with it? Because all I've seen are negative reviews, and have people actually had good experiences with it? And, you know, JP said, you know, I had issues because I was trying to play it at 1440p, um, and he's using, like, a two-PC setup, and I only have one. And then Co Carnage said that he didn't have any problems with it, and Man vs. Game said he didn't have any problems with it at all. So I decided, you know, I'll just chance it, you know, rather than just never playing a game because I don't want to be a part of the hype or whatever. It's like, just just play what you want to play whenever you want to play it and don't let the community distract you from what you want to enjoy. Mm -hmm. I still There's haven't somebody... bought Arkham Knight because I was super hyped for that game. I played Asylum and um, City, and I was really excited for that. But I didn't buy it for day one because I wasn't. I'm not like a super fan, so I want yeah. to see how it played out. And then I saw all the issues, and I still haven't purchased the game. Still wait. It'll probably be like in December when I finally <laughs> play that game. <laughs> yeah. So I think we kind of know where Erin stands on this then, because um, she's been very blunt and honest with it, that she does not buy a hype game just because it's hype and doesn't play it just because it's hype. Um, but is there, like, I know that there is on Twitch, but how about for, for you, Renee, and Anne, like, do you guys ever feel as though you need to purchase a game just because it is the number one game on Twitch right now and everyone is playing it and maybe no. you're not all that interested, but you might as well give it a try even. It kind of comes from that source of, well, you know, does the I mean, job <laughs> ever dictate a, a, pur a purchase decision like that? And I mean, I, I personally don't think it's necessarily a problem if it does, because it just, you know, sometimes we just have to do what's realistic. But I would just wonder, like, does that happen for you? Do you ever kind of notice that that the decision only, coming into the play? Only time I, the only time I purchased a game where I wasn't interested in it and then I, I ended up purchasing it anyways is for Effed Up Friday when usually Nick, Nick is like, amazing at finding um, indie games and cool, fun multiplayer games for us to play. So Thursday will come around and we'll be planning and he'll, and he'll, he'll say, hey, we need to buy this game and this game and this game. I've never heard of any, any of them, but I'll buy them all. And I usually end up enjoying myself. But that is really the only time I will play a game without knowing anything about it beforehand and only buying it because somebody else bought it or other people are streaming it. That's how it was for Rocket League. I, I'd never heard of it. I wasn't going to buy it until Nick said, we're playing this on Left Up Friday. Go buy it. I'm like, okay, fine, whatever. But on my own personal stream, no, I've I've never done that before. It's 
I don't know. I well, guess if, yeah. I think it just comes from a part of me. I'm like, I don't want to end up wasting money and buying a game. I already have so yeah. many games in my Steam wishes that I know are good <laughs> that I haven't played. So I don't want to add to it to my Steam list of games that I don't even know if I'm interested in and probably will never play. Yeah. Well, and I mean, if you look at so if you like, let's just play the top games that are on Twitch because that's what I'm going to get known for. You know, it's League of Legends, Dota, Starcraft you know, um, Hearthstone, which I haven't played any of those games, you know, and people are say people will ask me, do you play League of Legends? I say, no. And they're like, why not? You should play it because I'm not <laughs> interested in it. You know, it's not something that I want to spend my time doing. And if I, if I don't enjoy a game, I'm not going to play it. I started trying to play Bioshock, uh, the first one on PC. I literally rage quit the game because I got so frustrated with it and I haven't, I'm not going to play the rest of it. And, you know, I heard like about that. that. Yeah, that, <laughs> oh, that happens. God. Very rarely will League I actually of Legends, stop like, a game. going in without any direction is awful. Yeah. So I just, you know, I stopped playing the, for after maybe two hours of Bioshock. And I was like, okay, I'm done with it. I'm not going to play this anymore because I'm not having fun. And I think that that is what will ruin a stream is when you start forcing yourself to play games that you don't like just because people want you to play them. Like, Waffle and I both kind of stopped playing Minecraft around the same time. Because we both just started kind of getting bored of it, and I started playing other things. And, uh, you know, there are a lot of people still that will come into my chat and say, when are you going to play Minecraft? Are you going to play Minecraft today? And I'm like, I don't, I don't enjoy playing it as much as I used to, and I'm not having fun. And my attitude will just go down the drain if I, if I stop, you know, if I just force myself to play something that I don't like. So... I couldn't think of a game to come to play the other day because like nothing sounded good. So I just sang karaoke for like four hours. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't know what to play. I'll just That's sing really karaoke, cool. whatever. See, and there's there's games like that. There's a whole other genre of games like that that don't get any advertisement, aren't that big. Like most of the time they're free or something like that. Because I mean, there's karaoke party, there's quiplash, there's... Uh, drawful. There's cards of humanity. Like there's all of these other the, all the Jack party pack genre. games. Yeah, yeah. There's, like the there's party games. Social. Yeah. yeah, and I mean I've actually never played Heart Cards Against Humanity. What? Whatever. Yeah, I've never, <gasps> ever, not a single time. No. Okay. Well, I have like the whole Twitch the <laughs> bigger we'll blacker it. box. I've got like the whole thing with like all the expansions and stuff. Have you played yeah. Super Fight? That's Shannon, we one. should just have you on F Up Friday this week. Huh? You want to be on F Up Friday? We can play some Cards sure. of Humanity. Do it. Yeah, I got some champagne in my fridge that's waiting for Sick. So. champagne. Fancy, fancy after Friday, you're gonna drink some champagne. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> I am a classy white girl drunk. I can't okay, you know let me cards. just. Wow. My shoes are off, but I've got champagne in my hands, so there that's how go. that goes. Um, but yeah, I just it feels it feels like that 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 tone of fandom definitely seems to sway the currents of what can exist on Twitch, but it it's almost like. It's almost like streams that don't have that much content. It, it, it might be big, but it's only going to be a passing phase almost because there needs to be something beyond it. And I find that that's why games like Arkham Knight, it came out, it had its five days of fame, and it's gone. Like, no one is touching it anymore. And I feel as though, I think er what Aaron said is right. You know, there is a sort of sweet spot at the beginning where you kind of can't really tell what's hype because it's hyped and what's hype because it's good. And yeah. then if you kind of wait for that grace period to pass a little bit and you don't just buy into it the second it comes out, then all of a sudden you get more of the raw, the real, and the more unbiased ex experiences on Twitch and on YouTube. So, yeah. And everybody's freaking out over Gassy. Hi, Gassy. That's because Max is just like, Renee, you can't just, like, invite people on, on live on air without consulting <laughs> us. And I'm like, it's Shannon. Yeah. And then Max said, Can I come like too? You, which I'm is even more too. reason why. I'm not even going to wait to be asked. I'm just going to show up. Nice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Get wrecked, Max. <laughs> this is totally the way. <laughs> I feel like Erin would actually die of embarrassment if she ever showed up to an F. Up Friday because we would I just talk about so many. all the time. But we would just talk about so many lewd things and. You would actually have to be present and actually have to interact with us to, saying these lewd things, and you would just die of embarrassment. Yes. Nice. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. So now I, uh, I'm really thinking that 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 we've kind of beaten this this fanboy fandom hype train topic to death. So I'm basically just going to pass it over to you guys. And if there's anything else that you guys have seen in chat or you're getting spammed on your Twitter feed, because I've gotten spammed a little bit on my Twitter feed. And if there's anything else that we, we want to like just hash out, then let's, you know, have at it. I can see, yeah, now Gassy's just basically taking over the track. Way to, way to derail mm -hmm. it, Max. <gasps> God, oh, gosh. 
God. Um, um, well, one thing I have a question for you guys as more kind of veteran community members. I think for all the, you know, PAX Prime and TwitchCon are coming up and uh, maybe if there are people watching who are also, you know, kind of up and coming streamers, what do you guys feel like is the best way for new broadcasters to approach veteran broadcasters at events like this without it being like, hello, here's my name and my card. And like here, you know, can you guys help me become a bigger streamer and stuff like that? You know, because like I, I know when I went to PAX South with my first PAX like ever and oh, it was really I first loved you. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it was it like, is. you know, it's scary to go up to people and, you know, and say, I'm also a streamer because you don't want them to think that you're just trying to take care, you know, take advantage of their stream you know so like what's the best way or what's a good way of kind of making these friendships without it being super awkward i mean i think that there's <laughs> there's there's definitely like kind of that like right time right place to do that like just logistically speaking like if a streamer is in the bathroom or at a party probably not the most oh key God. time to do that because most of the time people aren't like it has happened. I've had people walk up to me in a bathroom. Yeah. And like I'm just washing my hands. Um, <laughs> I think that like, and, and if they're standing there doing meet and greets, there's also not the time because people are like trying to talk to them. Right. So it's, it's one of those situations where like usually the best way to ask for advice or opinions is to just become natural friends with that person, like show up in their casts interact, become part of their community, let them know you as a person. Because a lot of the times, like, we do get asked that all the time. Hey, can you help promote my stream? Hey, can you do this? And right. in five seconds, we can't make a judge over what kind of content you have or how we can improve your stream or do, do, do would my community even like your type of broadcast, right? Like, if you're super vulgar and I'm a family-friendly channel, like, chances are that I'm not going to be able to help you, Right. Right. So I think the best way to kind of get involved is in, is getting to know those broadcasters, but the first thing you shouldn't do shouldn't be, hey, how can you help me? It's just like, hey, let's get to know each other. Let's become friends yeah. and then figure out if our personalities mesh well, and then that's how you're going to get the most promotion, right? Like, and that's you true. and I met, and I didn't know mm -hmm. what kind of caster you were, right? And then I was like, ah, this girl's like really super awesome. And then it was like, oh, what kind of stuff do you do? I do Minecraft. Oh, I do Minecraft. Like, that's really cool. And then I came to your chat. Like, I watched a couple of your broadcasts. And then that's how we became friends and how we got to know each other, right? So right. I think that the best way to do that is to just make it a super organic type That's a good point, too. Is like, and don't wait to a convention to do it. Like, yeah. yeah. That's a good point. Because, like, if I, you know, if – if I had never like hung out in Renee's stream before and then gone up to her at PAX South and just been like, yo, what's up? Yeah. You know, like that is kind of a more awkward thing because she has no idea who I am. But right. because I like, you know, beforehand, I was already like subscribed and stuff like that. And I, you know, was in the chat and saying like, hey, you know, what's up? And she was more aware. And like, then you have a name already in your mind that you know, okay, well, I've, ammunition. I've been in your stream before too. Yeah. I don't even remember how I found your stream, but I've, I've, I tuned in before when you were playing Skyrim. Oh, cool. Yeah. 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 I remember that. Um, yeah. That's, but that's true okay, that like kind of then when people come up to me and they say, uh, oh, my name is and then they tell me their Twitch username. And yeah. if, I've, if they're regular, then I, I already know who you are. And then it's like, oh, great. You know, like it's so good to actually meet you in person rather than hello. I'm this person who literally has never said a word in your chat and you have no idea who I am. And now all of a sudden we're face to face. So that's yeah. definitely a good point. Yeah, and cool. I think that the other way to do it, too, is somebody brought up a, a good point, is that they... <laughs> Renee, you are frozen. Your face! <laughs> your face right oh, now! Yeah, so my close. face! Fix oh it! Oh, my God. Your eyes are, like, happen. half open. This is great. Yeah. You I think it happened. <laughs> yeah. Right now, I'm, like, so excited and just the epitome of thrilled right I'm now. I'm gonna fuck so up JP's cool. everything. So yeah. I think the, um, I think too, somebody brought up a, a good point is like the other way to I do that broke. too, just to like throw it out there is not to just go and like throw money at streamers because like we don't equate donations to like anything. It's it, like, it's, and we're thankful for it and it means something, but it's not like the end all be all. We are more appreciative of someone who donates a thousand dollars versus somebody who donates zero dollars. Like you could, donate, nervous, you could donate, you could donate zero dollars 
And we would we are just as appreciative of someone who has donated a mass amount of dollars because it's the support, it's the regularity, it's continuing to come and interact and be part of the community that means a lot to us. And we can judge more of a person on their character <laughs> by the way that they interact versus just like the dollar. God damn right. it, yeah. yeah. I don't know why everyone is frozen. I fully I agree with you. I like Renee, your new picture is adorable. Oh, look at that. JP is so nice yeah. to me. It's actually, it actually makes me more nervous when I feel like, because sometimes there will be people who, like, they think that if they donate a lot of money or they think that if they do, you know, like, if they send you money that you're going to do something for them. Like, that right. you're going to take their There's advice more than other people's. Yeah, it, like, sets this kind of weird yeah. expectation. So it's like, well, I really, you know, I'm always like, okay, like, I really appreciate that. But then sometimes people will take it a little bit too far where they're like, okay, well, now you're going to do, like, if I say this then there's this expectation that you're going to do what I want you to because I gave you this money. Yeah. And sometimes that kind of makes me a little bit nervous when people do things like that. Like, I'm not going to mod you just because you donated a bunch of money, you know. Um, and not so. to, not to like, get into any specifics, but I have had, not myself, but I have seen, ex like, uh, instances where not, it's not just, uh, we're not just talking about viewers uh, trying to, create a relationship with a caster that they can carry over into real life. This also pertains to other casters and to also to developers. I have seen it where developers will try to uh, in initiate a relationship and it's really difficult to try to initiate a relationship with a caster because maybe all they do is cast and you don't know how to start that conversation. So they might try to donate. And that's not the right way to go about it. Um, I would suggest that Make sure that if you want to try approaching uh, a larger broadcaster when you come to a convention, start try to start that conversation before you come to the convention. It doesn't have to be that way. As, as you just heard Anne and Aaron say, they met for the first time at PAX South. They had never had a discussion before. They had not really been in each other's channels before. And that was a friendship that just sparked organically. But for anyone else who's just like, you really admire someone's work, you want to have a real conversation with them in person, you can definitely approach them. But I would say try to understand the kind of personality that they have before you do that at a convention. Like, for example, um, I was actually a huge fan of Zeke before I met him. I did not meet him, I think, until PAX. I think it was actually PAX South, but it might have been PAX Prime. And I watched his content beforehand. And it... It might be a bit easier for me in my admin hoodie to go up to someone like that and, and say hi and just, you know, be cool. But it, it still is nerve wracking. And so for me, I, you know, I, I watched a lot of his content leading up to that. And for me, there was a, there was a conversation starter because I could say, oh, well, I just saw you do X game last week. You know, how's it going? You know, are you really excited to get back into it when you get back from the convention? Or are you totally just right. going to you know, screw that and just move on to something else? It makes things have a more organic feel if you can have an icebreaker. And sometimes icebreakers are like the hardest thing in the world to have. But if you want to network, then you're going to need to be a bit creative and you're going to need to come up with something to start that conversation because it is a conversation you want to have. And well, it's not going to happen unless you make it happen. So. Well, and it's also like people. So I, I recently uh, had left my job about two weeks ago to focus on full time streaming. And since then, it was like all of a sudden I started streaming with a bunch of people and a lot of other broadcasters and people would come into my chat and say, who are you and why are you streaming with all these people? Because I am friends with Waffle. Waffle and I have been friends for a long, like a year. Like we've been friends for a long time. you started streaming, really? Yeah. And so he and I like have been friends and he would text me and say, hey, we're doing speedrunners. Do you want to stream with us? And I'm, I would be at work. So it was, you know, it was like two o'clock in the afternoon. And so, um, so now that I, after I quit my job, then it was like, okay, now I'm streaming, you know, with Waffle and Lyric and Shorty and, um, and JP and Gassy and stuff. And it was just like, all of a sudden I started streaming with all these people and they're like, how did you network your way into this position where you're, you know, streaming with all these people? And I told people that it wasn't, I didn't look at it as networking. I wasn't like, Hey Lyric, do you want to play speedrunners with me? Because I am also a streamer and like whatever. It's yeah. just I, you know, you kind of make these friendships just naturally by hanging out with people on their channels and uh, just by making these kind of natural, as you said, organic friendships and relationships. And it wasn't like 
I want to know you to take advantage of your audience. It was like, yeah. I just want to hang out with you because you're cool. Yeah, don't and walk cool into and it with that play. mindset. Well, <laughs> right. So for me, like it's I really- had at my very first PAX East back in 2000 and I guess 13, there had been a bunch of like Minecraft people that were all going and none of us had really ever gotten together in the same place and like just hung out and had dinner together. And how often is everyone in one place, right? Other than at a convention. So I was like, Hey, we should all go to dinner. I coordinated the whole thing. I was like, okay, meet here. We put together the Skype chat. Like I met a bunch of people in person and then people were like, Hey, my other friends are Minecrafter. Can they come? And I was like, yeah, sure. That's fine. And so we ended up having like 50 people and I met a bunch of different people Fast forward to December, so that was in March or April, the December after that, I quit my job also to focus on content creation. And finally, for the first time, I asked like, hey, I just quit my job, I finally got time to record because I was only recording at night, now I can record during the day. If you're ever interested in doing something, let me know. And everyone was like, yes, absolutely. And that month I did an LP with a different person every single day for Christmas and counting up to Christmas. And my channel subscriptions jumped from 30,000 to 75,000 subs in the span of like four weeks. But I had met those people months before never asked them to do a collaboration, never asked them to stream with me, never asked them to play a game. Like just, hey, how's it going? You know, I hope everything's going well. And it then forward like months and months and months later for the first oh time then asked them to, to do something. So I don't know. It, sometimes it's not an immediate like I'm going to become friends with you and then tomorrow I'm going to ask you to do a collaboration. Like you can know somebody for months and months and months and then. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And I think... Uh, that's, that's just another one of those things that shows how a- anticipating something before you actually step into a physical world of convention where you're trying to, you know, network in person, which is yeah. incredibly stressful. It can be really intimidating if there's somebody that you really admire, uh, being around yeah. those, that, like a huge crowd of people. And then on top of that, there's, you know, within that, there's also like huge crowds of people following those broadcasters that you like. So, um, if yeah, you're looking, you don't want to like answer, wait in line to like talk to someone, and it's like weird. Yeah. Oh, it's a weird thing. That's that's the thing. <laughs> if you're looking for a concrete answer, there kind of isn't because unfortunately, yeah. you can't predict where all the streamers are just going to have a moment, mm-hmm. and that moment is going to be the right moment for you to just have a random conversation. It could be at the convention food fair. You might just spot them and just be like. I, you know, totally feel like pizza too, you know, like, you know, I don't know. And then have a conversation (laughs) about what you did so far during the convention. What games did you go play? It could also be that all they do is spend all their time around the Twitch booth. So it might be way easier to approach them and just be like, yo, I really love your content. I totally love this game too. And I don't know if you're totally interested in, you know, doing a multiplayer thing or not sometime, blah, blah, blah. You know, just... It, it has to happen in the way it happens. There's no real rhyme or reason. There's no mm-hmm. prescription that we can really give you, unfortunately. Um, yeah. Just just be real. Be yourself. And don't be looking for, I guess, for, how do I say this without being rude? Uh, just, like, I don't know. Just just don't look for anything. You know? Right. Just, just do it just to have a conversation. That's all I can really say. Yeah. That's well, and, like, remember that it's not that as coming from the mouths of streamers like we don't view it as a competition with each other so we're not like going to be yeah. pissed that you're also a streamer yeah. you know like we're going to yeah. be like okay cool great what do you play you know um we're not trying to we're not trying to like shut people out of streaming or anything like that like we we like that there are other people streaming but definitely just don't view it as this thing where you're trying to compete with other people or taking advantage of other people just because right. they're streamers Brotato has said a couple of really smart things in chat. The first thing he said was make friends, not allies. And that's so true. Don't think of it as an angle. Just think of it as just being social and just having a good time. Be relaxed. And the Mm -hmm. other thing he said was alcohol helps. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know about that last I think Renee took over his computer (laughs) and typed that. I think... (laughs) <laughs> I think that like one of the things that like in any like advice panel, whether it's like a content creator through YouTube, Twitch, like no matter what they do, I think that the common thing that everybody will always tell you is that if you're not doing it to have fun, if you're going into anything with the mindset of this is what's going to make me successful, yep. you've already failed. Like yeah. you can't view any person or anything as like your end strategy. And if you're the people who are successful at what they do, go look at anybody, 
they do it because they love it and not because they were like, yep. this is what's going to get me famous. Like you can see that in people and being authentic is is genuinely the best way to go about something. Mm -hmm. So this keep that in mind when you're going up to a streamer. And, and it's okay to ask for help. Like every single one of us is where we are today because somebody helped us. Like I'm not above saying like, well, I made it on my own. Like no, all of us got help, right? Collaborations are literally what made my channel. So it's okay to ask for that help, but just realize that we get asked all the time and it's hard to be able to give an authentic yes or no without knowing what kind of person you are. And that's done by being active, being involved in the community, being friends, like getting to know the people that you're asking for help from. Yep. Right. Yeah, I get a lot of messages that are like, yo, can you check out my channel and tell me what I'm doing right or wrong? And it's like, right. everybody, you know, it's you get a lot of those messages. And one thing that I will actually uh, say is that I a lot of time will tell people to go to the Twitch subreddit, which Shannon is um, our responsible person for so um you know i'll direct people to that because it's like that's a really good resource for a lot of information and you've got access to the community and stuff and if you're one of my viewers and you're asking me for feedback on your channel sometimes i feel like i don't know that i can give you know if i can give them a honest answer that's going to seem unbiased you know because i don't want to say like oh well you know maybe this isn't maybe you're doing this wrong or whatever because i'm you're one of my viewers and i would feel awkward kind of being mean to you so sometimes if I, I think that the, the Twitch subreddit can be a really great resource for people to go. And um, Actually, on that note, I'll just say that uh, every so often the Twitch subreddit tries to run like a feedback kind of thing, which is really honest feedback. It gets honest. So just be prepared. But if yeah. you want feedback on your channel from people who may or may not know who you are or what you're about, then uh, we'll start another thread for that later on tonight. And then everybody who is looking for any information about how to improve their content, then, you know, just take part and make sure that you are giving feedback and not just asking to get feedback. Um, so hopefully that'll be a little bit uh, easier to get some people some more enlightened answers and some knowledge on what they could be doing better. Before yeah. my camera completely freezes again, I just wanted to give my two cents on the, yeah. the subject yes. of yes. people approaching you. Because I've, I've obviously been approached by a lot of people regarding streaming, especially a lot of uh, girls since we, uh, since the last drop fems, I put it out there being like, if you're a female streamer and you ever need advice or anything, because we do have a, tend to have a, a slightly different experience than, than guy streamers. Um, I've had a lot of people approach me and there have only been like a handful of cases. Basically, if somebody approaches me and says, within the first minute of me talking to them, they say, would it be, w could you please check out my channel? Like, I'm immediately out. I'm like, yeah, I see what this is all about. I'm out. I'm done. I don't care how nice you're being. I, I, it doesn't really matter. The second you say, would, could you show up on my channel and just say hi in the chat? I'm like, no, I yeah. see what this is all about. You're not really interested in like being my friend or something because I've, I've made a lot, a lot of my friends that I have now were people who originally were viewers or fans of mine. Uh, one of my closest friends, Rich Plays, Sean, he came to our meetup in San Francisco as a fan and now he's one of my closest friends. So there is a way that you can do it tactfully, but if you just go out there and say, could you stop by my channel or... Could you like give me a shout Clean out or something like stream. that? Yeah, if the yeah. second you ask that, I'm out of the conversation and I'm done. Um, but if you just approach me, if you approach me and you just ask me for advice, it's like, hey, I just started streaming. How do you do this? Like, can you help me with this? Blah, blah, blah. I am more than happy to give you any sort of verbal advice. But um, mm -hmm. when people approach me and just like ask me for a shout out or wanting to like play, like, would you want to like stream together? That, that too. I'm like, no, nope, we're done. If you want to play games together <laughs> off of cast, Totally. But if you ask me, do you want to stream together? I'm out of the conversation already. Right. Um, and that's just, that's just, maybe that's like shitty and douchey. But for me, I've been in this industry for so long and I've, I, that happens to me so much where I'll like get into a conversation with somebody. I'm like, oh, this, this person seems really cool. I'd love to like hang out with them. And they're just like, could you like give me a shout out? And I'm just like, oh, you could have been yeah. so cool. <laughs> this could have been yeah. so good. And then you <laughs> fucked it all up. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but that, and that's yeah. just my two cents. I never want that's people to like feel intimidated or scared to approach me if you ever just want to like ask me a question i'm totally open to, to answer the question as best as i can but if you are just like using me for like my numbers or something or exposure then it's just yeah it's exactly like twitch chat though and like people if someone comes in and just says hey what's up how was your day and i'm like hey how are you doing you know whatever their name is and like my day was good but if they come in and they say give me a shout out i ignore those messages 
right? Like I don't. Notice I'm not me, gonna just, Senpai. <laughs> yeah, like I'm not gonna I respond to you though. just because you know. Like I'm, I'm happy to just be like, yo, what's up, guys? Like, hey, hey, how are you? If you just say hi normally, but as soon as they're like, can you give me a shout out? Then I just ignore it. So it's just yeah. like that only in real life. Yeah. Oh, pretty much. I don't know why those people think that that's like a tactical know. way of doing things. <laughs> I, I imagine yeah. most people are not like that. Because honestly, the mo- no. most of my experience that I have no. talking to viewers and fans is always positive. I I am very much like to keep like the way I am on my stream is exactly how I'm in real life. So I I <laughs> feel like when people come over and say hi and approach me, I just try and be as chill as possible, and I try and and soothe them like as much as possible because a lot of people come up and they're so nervous, and I'm nervous too. So I'm like, so one of us needs to not be nervous. So I'm always like trying to <laughs> calm us both down. Um, yeah, it was like when I I met Renee at PAX South and she had already been in my channel and stuff, but I walked up to her and I was like, hey, I'm ammunition. And she was like, hey, what's up? And then I was like, OK, bye. And I just like walked away. So <laughs> he just left. I know. Yeah, he just like peaced out. And I was like, wait, where did Anne go? I yeah, to talk I just to walked her. away. Yeah, that's it's scary to meet people like in person. But I've never walked up to someone because I'm too shy. Yeah, I, I, I've, I, done it. I like I've done up. it. I get really <laughs> awkward, but I did it to. Oh, Uh-oh. Shannon froze. No, oh, Shannon froze. Shannon. She did it too. Oh, no. Ah. Oh, no. She's the one in running this whole thing. What do we do? We just she freak got out now. wrecked. Yeah, I don't know. Panic. I think I think I, like most. I'm always afraid that people think that I'm like rude because I like won't go talk to people. But it's not because now her says I'm an idiot. It's not because I don't <laughs> want to talk to people. I'm just really shy. It's like I would always prefer that people come up to me. Because right. even if I know them, unless it's like someone I really like, I'll walk up to Renee and be like, hey, loser, what's up? Actually, right. I don't say that. I'll be like, I love you so much. But, <laughs> um, yeah, so I mean, I, I normally like won't walk up to people. So I always like prefer <clears throat> people do it to me because I don't like what if I walk up to them and they're like, I actually hate you. And then I'm like, oh, OK. See, but like that will never happen. I don't think, you know, like the chances of someone actually responding to you saying, hello, how are you? And with I hate you is that's the thing that, like, people get so scared to say hello to you in person. It's like, what's the worst that's going to happen? It's maybe it'll just be, like, awkward for five seconds of your life and then it's over, you know? Like, my mom will always I, say, I, if I, I, if I like, want to ask for something, then it's like, what's the worst that could happen? Like, someone yeah. will say no if you ask for something and they just say no and that's it. And you move on. Yeah. So, it's like, it's not, I it do, like, won't be that bad. speed runs just come by and, like, hey, I'm actually on my way over to something when I'm not totally. But if, if like, I'm worried it might be an awkward thing, then I'll be like, hey, hey, it's one just say hi really quick. I'm on my way over to a thing. So then I just say hi. And then mm-hmm. if it ends up not being awkward, then I'm like, oh, I can just wait. Like, it's fine. I can reschedule it. I just lie. I just basically just lie. Wow. Liar it's all the times I've tried to talk to Renee and she's like, I'm actually on my way to a thing. It's just really that she doesn't it's want always, to It's all been a lie. Now you know I'm not lying anything. I was just like, this is a really awkward conversation. I want to get out of this. So this is how. <laughs> Do you need to go to a thing now? or? <laughs> yeah, I actually have yeah. uh, <laughs> that thing over there. Get going. Got to do a thing. Yeah, I don't, I mean, have you guys ever had experiences, like, at conventions that you just, because I don't, I can't think of a time that I ever felt genuinely, like, uncomfortable with people coming up to me. Like, I've never really had, no. for the most part, people are, like, really nice and chill. Yeah. Like, you'll get an occasional business card, but it's, like, most people are great, so we don't worry about people walking up to us. Yeah, yeah. I'm fine with people giving me I've, business cards. I've never cards. really like, had, cool. like, an awkward or... Even like I've never really even had like a creepy experience with anyone at any convention. Everyone's always just been really nice. Occasionally, somebody will just be very, very nervous. But like I said, oh, yeah. at at conventions, I have a lot of social anxiety. So when I'm in those like scenarios, people are always like, "I'm sorry, I'm so nervous." I'm like, "Please, I am also nervous. We're in the same boat. It's cool. We're both nervous. We're both nerds. We don't get out a lot. It's fine. We're all on the same playing field here." Um, I think a lot of Am people don't even realize that broadcasters are like that. Hi, welcome back. I'm sorry. Uh, That's okay. There's actually we were just like lost a lot without of broadcasters you. Who, who struggle with like social anxiety and, and all those issues. And you're not alone when you approach somebody and you're freaking out. Like I approached Felicia Day when I saw her at E3 and I was shaking when I took the picture with her. I was, I was like, I was like, oh my God. Felicia Day, you've been such an influence on me. I love you so much. And I was like, can I please get a picture? And she was so nice. And I went up and I took a picture. My hand was just shaking. 
and the picture came out so blurry, but I loved it. And it was I'm like, so it was glad like a you... nerve wracking experience for me, but I'm glad I did it. I'm glad I approached her and said hi, because I, should, I would have I, been regretting it if I didn't. I should preface this by saying that all redheaded, like all redheads are like feel a, a natural affinity with other redheads. So like yes. we see another one and we're just like, oh my God, yes. So <laughs> we're best friends. Like right now we're seriously, we're best friends, right? We're best friends. It's super easy to find on the convention floor. Because I was like, there's oh, Renee yeah. all the way over there, like 500 people over. Except for Shannon and I get confused from behind all the time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all the time. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Renee, I'm doing a panel with her on Friday. Oh, and I'm so God. nervous. I was like, I can't. I went and bought clothes because I'm like, I can't stand next to Felicia Day. Like, I am not <laughs> worthy of this. Look so cute. I that can't so even, cute. like. <gasps> <gasps> Did you? <gasps> no. In her hand. I can't. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, my hand I'm right on her. Sweating. What no. do you do with your hands? I don't. You know what I noticed, Erin? When you get nervous, you actually take your hair and you put it over your face. Like it's like you're Mary <laughs> Catherine Gallagher. You know, like you put your hands in your armpits and then you smell. Them. I can't. I get so <laughs> nervous. Like I was like, I would wait for on the Xbox for like the guild to come out every week to like I watch like the, the yeah. thing and like oh, I'm sweating. Okay. Anyway, I'm glad, Renee, I wasn't the only one that's that nervous. Okay. No, I... That was like uh, a major nerd moment for you right there, Erin. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Someone's going to someone's gonna gift that also me just like putting my face over my shirt and sliding <laughs> down the chair. I can't. Um, anyways, yeah, all I was going to say about Dan was just that he was, he was really, really sweet when I met him. Like, I figured he had no idea, like, who I was or what anything because it's just admin stuff, right? Nice and, again. He, uh, oh yeah, Renee is. <laughs> well, at least she looks happy. <laughs> I like look happy this time. Yeah. <laughs> She's really enjoying this conversation. Um, <laughs> Dan, Dan was just really cool about everything, and I think it's uh, there's there's certain people who just know how to make you feel relaxed. And when you find a caster like that, and you meet them for the first time, sometimes you can be really nervous because maybe you just really like them, and they can just be freaking cool about shit like man versus game was also the same way because he he makes me <laughs> come on <laughs> good, good, good. Why Renee's is failure is now a really die? embarrassment <laughs> no I remember that's from the time that you were that you were on drop frames yeah yeah How does he still have that he's just like saving pictures <laughs> so yeah we've all had our awkward moments and he just has basically a dossier for like yeah. really awkward photos oh for every one of us it's good because Aaron and I get confused Great. with each other all the time too sweet. so I like the same person anyway. I remember the first time I ever met Renee was at GameVid Expo in Atlanta last year. And the first thing Renee said was, yeah, some dad walked up to me earlier and said, are you a Raelian? Please sign this for my daughter. And I was like, <laughs> yes, already. I've never met her and she hates me already. <laughs> wow. Damn. Amazing. Wow. I too work in the game. He's just replacing all of our pictures with other people. I think JP is bored of what we're talking about. I think, yeah, I think he's, he's trying to get us to. Well, you know what? It's <laughs> actually <laughs> it's actually almost three hours in, and oh, I wow. know that uh, I know that like we all have. Well, I don't. Oh, oh, see, I win this because I get Dodger. I win. <laughs> that's that's amazing. Um. Oh, and there's the Viking. Good. Okay, so everybody's a different person now. Welcome to Dropped Fems, where we all <laughs> change pieces. So, um, yeah, I think we should just uh. Start wound, winding it up, winding it winding up, it up. Um, yeah. and I guess we'll start with Renee. Renee, can you do some, uh, <laughs> some shout outs for us? Yeah, sure. Uh, uh, um, thank you guys for, for coming by and watching. I'm sorry, my camera's frozen. Hello. But I'm smiling. I'm so happy. I'm so happy <laughs> on this whole thing. Uh, my name is Renee. Uh, my channel name is LOL Renee. And uh, right now I'm playing through a lot of Fallout. And it's always a good time. On every Friday, I do a show called f Up Friday, where we drink, play video games. It's always a good time. And uh, you can see me at twitter.com slash <laughs> All that stuff. You guys are the best. I just love this frozen picture of you. I'm so, so happy. happy. I know. You Yay! look so happy. It's great. <laughs> and shout, us, shout, some, shout, shout things out. Do the okay. shouts. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm Ammunition. I stream under the name Ammunition. Um, and I also have been playing Fallout 3. I'm just about done. I've done four of the five DLCs, so I just have one left. And then I'll be switching over to some Fallout New Vegas. I also play a lot of Rocket League with JP and various other streamers. And I've been playing Ori in the Blind Forest. Um, 
And that's about it. I stream every day. I'm going to be gone for the next couple days, though, because I am moving to a new apartment. So um, come on by once I am actually back from moving. Nice. Awesome. Erin. Um, I'm Erin, also known as Aurelian. You can find me everywhere slash Aurelian. <laughs> so Twitter, YouTube, Twitch, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, Tumblr, everywhere. Um, I stream occasionally because I work full time for Twitch as the lead community manager. But you can follow along with all of my crazy adventures and shenanigans on Twitter. Uh, that's where most of my goof ups are documented. So if you want to be entertained and see lots of Twitch type awesome stuff, then head on over to Twitter. And uh, yeah. Awesome. And. and I am I am Shannon Zed Killer. That's Zed because I'm Canadian, so say it my way or else. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I don't really stream all that much. This is something that is a problem. I try to correct it sometimes, but mostly I just like to play games for myself offline and then watch a lot of streamers and backseat game for all of them, especially with playing Fallout. Uh, you can follow me at twitter.com slash Shannon Zed Killer. Also the same on Instagram and Twitch in case I do happen to go live, which is usually just like a complete shock to everyone's system. <laughs> so you know that might actually happen later this week with Fucked Up Friday. Who knows? If Max is okay with it. <laughs> Max. All right. <laughs> All right. And uh, JP is uh, doing graphics while he's drunk because that's a thing. <laughs> I hate JP Good. more and more every day. Damn. We all do. <laughs> I know. It's like a growing hatred. <laughs> well, he'll be back on the next episode of Drop Frames. Yeah. I, I actually, we should probably just stop and just say uh, thank you, JP, for letting us totally take over your stuff. Yay. Thanks, JP. Thanks, JP. <laughs> yeah. Even though you're, you're a complete troll, like king shit, all right? But yeah, we love you anyways, and thank you for giving us the chance to take over your stuff for three hours. <laughs> all right. That's it. We're out of here. We're going to go drink champagne and do. Mm-hmm. I'm going to drink tequila, tequila but I'm sure. I'm going to go work. That, oh. Well, okay. okay. I'm just going to go drink <laughs> Oh, man. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Bye. guys. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Renee, can you wave for us before we go? Uh, I am waving, but my video's on. I'm waving for <laughs> Renee. She can't wave. We'll just wave extra. I waved on the off chance that maybe my camera would come back. No. Nah. Wax <laughs> on. Wax on. All right, bye-bye. Bye. 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 <laughs>